if this works. Folks, please tell me that you can see me and hear me. Because uh, it has been a stressful eight minutes of my life. Here we go. Jeez, that was a wild eight minutes. Um, I am so sorry that this took so long. Um, can see, can hear. Yes, hello, let's go. Hey, I can see you. Hi, you're here. Hello, Robin. Toot toot, young man. Um, guys, I'm so sorry about that. I had the worst last eight minutes. Um, hopefully, uh, I didn't just click out of it and ruin everything. Um, we will see when people say, no, you disappeared. Um, great. All right, folks. Um, this was wild. Yes, I we did a stream yesterday just for our patrons. Everything went perfectly. And uh, the only thing I changed was I, I changed a setting to make it a little clearer. Um, and that apparently ruined everything. So I just had to kind of shut everything down. Re I don't know. I'll never know. I'll never understand these streams. Folks, welcome. Welcome, Titanic fans. Welcome, video gamers. Welcome, everybody. Um, to our first stream in a long time, if you couldn't tell. Um, I... Uh, <laughs> I haven't done a stream in over a year, um, and we as a, as a company have not done a stream um, in about uh, 10 months. So it's been a long time since you've seen anything live from us, but if you've been on our YouTube the last uh, 30 days, boy oh boy have you been getting the content from us. Um, uh, lots of really cool things that we've been showing off, and lots of cool things to show off today. My name is James Penka. That's right, I made this today. Um, my name is James Penka. I am the creative director of Titanic Project 401, Titanic Honor and Glory as well, Vintage Digital Revival, our entire uh, VDR Titanic empire, as uh, I called it yesterday, and I think we always need to call it for the rest of time. Um, uh, it's such a pleasure to have you all here. It's a pleasure to be here myself. Um, thank you for, for waiting. Um, if you are brand new to this adventure, this Titanic adventure, if you if you are just joining us um, for the first time because you saw some of our videos this month, please let me know in the chat so I can I can just see how many people are here out of uh, uh, out of the new videos that we've been releasing. Um, we got a lot of new um, uh, subscribers and followers and, and patrons through the um, the trailer that we just released last month, um, which is very cool. Um, someone, uh, some people on YouTube have been uh, looking at our, our trailer and stuff, which is which is fun. Um, so yes, great. We have some new people. We have some people from the Guarantee Group, of course. Been here since 2016. Thank you, the Cookie. That's a long time. Um, it's about as long as I've been here. Um, amazing. I'm glad to see some new people. Welcome to everybody. Um, we have a lot to get to today. I don't know how long this stream will be. It will at least be two hours. It might go longer. Um, because I want to talk about the projects, where we are, what we're doing, but I also want to show you the demo, and that it's it's a big demo. <laughs> it's 50% of uh, of Titanic, so we have a lot to show. Um, I don't want to show you absolutely everything. We got to leave some some things for um, discovery purposes, but there's still a lot even with that. So uh, we might be here for a couple hours. So so s stick around or check back tomorrow because I know for people in Europe it's late check back tomorrow. This will all be on YouTube. Um, I'm probably going to cut it up and put it on as smaller YouTube clips as well, if you'd rather do it that way. Um, folks, our, our, this is a big day for us at VDR. It is, uh, it is March 3rd. It is the day that we are releasing uh, Demo 401 Update 2.0. Um, this has been a long time coming. It's been a year since our, our 1.4, I suppose. Uh, or about that long. It's been a long time. Um, but this is the first time that we will ever be releasing 50% of Titanic. And if you know who we are, you know as a company, our our dream is to recreate 100% of the Titanic in some fashion. And and to say that we we are at 50% with this project, um, it's, it's a big day for us, and we're very, very proud. And to release it for free is 
awesome as well. Like we're just we're we're so glad that we are able to just give you this. Um, it's a really cool thing. I've been playing it all week naturally, um, and uh, my my eight year old self would cry at this. Um, so uh, I got okay. Alternate audio says only fifty percent. I'm I'm sure they're joking, um, but for the record, it's only fifty percent of Titanic, but it's virtually every public space. Um, the the majority of the fifty that is not there are cabins and uh, you know m- machinery spaces, stuff like that. But um, I think you could reshoot the entirety of the 1997 movie and not have any missing places. Um, I think it's pretty much all there. Uh, somebody will have to do that and see if it's possible. Uh, so let's get into it. I have a lot to cover. We have a special guest that we're going to talk to. Um, uh, for our patrons who were here yesterday, we had a patron-only stream, as I mentioned. Um, uh, I'm going to repeat some information for them. Um, s- short plug, you can join our Patreon and be a part of patron-only streams and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. Um, our our uh, officer tier patrons, the, our highest tier, they've already been playing um, this uh, demo for a little bit because they've been helping us uh, test it in some ways. So um, very cool. Um uh, Spammels is here. That's amazing. Welcome, Spammels. Speaking of Spammels, um, there are uh, a handful of YouTubers that got the demo early, and they will be releasing content. And I, f- I think they were actually able to post it um, at 4.01. So, in fact, they probably were showing the demo before I even started this uh, this stream. So there's other demo uh, uh, demo 4.01 content out there um, to get to. Um uh, yes, we talked about that. We talked about that. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, for some of you, you're new. For some of you, you are you are not new. You are you've been here for years, um, like I have. Uh, a lot of us have been here for a long time. Um, uh, let Let me just talk about where our company is, um, where our projects are, why there are two projects now. Um, you, if you haven't joined us in a while, or you haven't been following on our Patreon. Which, by the way, you don't have to join our Patreon to see all the updates. You can just go over there and look at the updates and follow them. Um, the patrons just get them a little earlier. Um, so if you haven't been following, um, we are still uh, the <laughs> premier uh, <laughs> Titanic recreation video game situation. Um, vintage Digital Revival. Uh, we have our flagship project, Titanic Honor and Glory, which is... Uh, probably why you are here, uh, especially if you've been here a while. Um, Our visuals have been in documentaries. They've been in museums. They have been all over the place um, because they are really wonderful. Um, uh, The the core of those visuals are from uh, names like Matt, Kyle, Gio, Nico. You guys know some of these names. Um, They're geniuses with Titanic. They're amazing at what they do. Um, Artists of the highest degree, in my humble opinion. Um, they've been making um, these visuals that became known as Titanic Honor and Glory, which um, is an ongoing project. Um, uh, it's been going for almost a decade. It began as a, a different project uh, about a decade ago. Um, but uh, we've had our ups and downs, as you know. Uh, we had fundraisers years and years ago that many of you likely donated to, and we're always so grateful to those donations that really got the project off the ground. Um, but that was like eight years ago now, and um, a lot has happened. The team has changed. People have left. People have joined. Uh, people have left and then joined again. Uh, in the case of Derek Revere, um, our our lead uh, engine lead and, and uh, technical art director, Derek, he, he left for a bit, came back. Um, I've been with the project for eight years or something like that, um, but as creative director for about two years. Um, so a lot has happened. And so um, where are our projects now and why are there two? So let's talk about Titanic Honor and Glory first. I have some visuals for you that I want to jump into right away. I've got like 25. Oh, we got we got some Super Chats, guys. I, I forgot about Super Chats. Thank you. We got uh, from Jay uh, Homestead, $20. Greetings from the folks at the, the Molly Brown Museum. Hey, Molly Brown Museum, the House Museum. Uh, we love Molly Brown. Um, uh, and we love that museum. That's great. 
Um, will the complete uh, THG game be on Steam? $5 Super Chat. Yes, it will, eventually. Um, and Project 401, which is what we're really here to talk about, will definitely be on Steam, because um, that's coming much sooner. If so, please uh, get uh, get uh, bought on my Steam account link right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and $10 from Jill. Uh, your geniuses make us all so happy. Thank you. Uh, uh, hi, Dan, a.k.a. Spamels. That's great. Um, and I, 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 I'm sorry I missed a couple. I know Jake sent one. Uh, Jake, thank you. And yes, I, I will show you personally the Master at Arms cabin. I know you want that the most. Um, great. Keep those coming. Um, I, I will I'll try to keep up on them. When I'm playing the demo, I won't be able to see these. So I will not be able to um, keep up on that. So anyway, I want to show you these visuals from Titanic Honor and Glory, where that project even is right now. Um, because if you haven't noticed, um, Demo 401 has migrated into this own its own thing. It is now a, a demo for uh, something that we call uh, Titanic Project 401. It's going to be incredible. Uh, but Titanic Honor and Glory is still under development. Got another super chat. Hopefully we don't get too many of these guys. <laughs> uh, we got we got some Titanic to get to. Um, uh, Spectre set for ten dollars. Thank you so much. Says I remember a long time ago it was mentioned that THG would be coming to uh, consoles. Is this still the case? Um, likely no. Uh, we don't. Um, as a, as a small indie company, of course, um, PC is is all we're focused on right now. We'd love to get it to consoles one day. I just we we don't even know where to begin with that at the moment. Um, if we can do that, oh boy, would we ever want to. Um, Fifty dollars. Geez, thanks so much from CXXD Reacts. I've been following this game since 2016. Thank you. Uh, I love it so much. This is a childhood dream come true for me. Me as well. Ten dollars from WIT Simulations. Been following the project for years. Amazing job to the team. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, uh, Estonia. Epic Gamer. Finally happening. Been here since 2016. Thanks, Estonia. Epic Gamer. Are you from Estonia? I visited Estonia this year, and it was my favorite country ever. I loved it. Loved my time in, in uh, Estonia. Um, in Tallinn is where I was. Uh, so, uh, folks, I'm going to try not to do that too much. We got we got a lot of super chats. So so gracious, um, uh, very generous folks on our in our community. So I want to show you these images of where THG is now. Um, uh, basically, in a nutshell, um, the hull. Thank you, Blue Star Line. Um, uh, the hull of our ship back in Demo Three, you may recall, uh, needed a massive update. It was not the it was not the, sh the the outside of our Titanic. It was its own model, right? You had to load into the interiors because if you were in the outside of Titanic and you peeked your head in a window, there'd be nothing in there, and and vice versa. So we needed a an updated hull. Um, another issue that plagued the uh, development of THG up to this point, um, and still plagues us in Project 401, of course, um, is that things don't always line up. You know, you'll we would model this room, we would model this room, and this room, and we'd connect them by the hallways, all to the size that we thought they should be. But then when these two rooms were connected, the hallways don't line up because things are, are just slightly out of whack. In fact, this is why in Project 401 or Demo 401, which you will all play at 6 p.m. today, or you'll download it at 6 p.m. today, um, you cannot go down the officer's stairs from the uh, officer's promenade because it would go straight through a cabin because the cabins underneath are too wide. That's the sort of thing that we're dealing with here. So... Um, so we needed a hull that was the correct size, that had shear. You, you all know, most of you want shear very badly. Um, shear is the, the the slight bow to the, the ship um, as a whole. And it really does give things like Scotland Road and the promenades a certain bend that's just beautiful. Uh, we want that. We, we want all those things. We want you to be able, be able to... to um, have the outside and the inside in the same, uh, you can walk on, all that stuff. So so Kyle started a new hull, and, um, and he did it in the way that only Kyle would. He is building his hull for Titanic Honor and Glory the way that Harland and Wolf once did. You really can't get more historically accurate than that. Um, he is putting down every every keel bar the the plates coming from it the floors on top of it the plates around the side the frames going up every angle bar 
everything he is doing uh, according to the original iron plans. And what this will do is it will not only give us a hull that looks correct and is historically accurate visually, uh, but it will also give us a framework for the interiors. You can't mess up the interiors when you literally have the frames lined out. Um, it, it, for those of you who don't know, Titanic was built in a very, very precise manner. And if you follow that precise manner, it, it is bound to um, make things much more seamless, literally. Uh, but uh, another cool thing about it is, when you think about Titanic, how much of it is bare steel. How much of third class, how much of the cargo holds, uh, how much of it is you can literally see the frames of the ship uh, in the interiors. So, so much of that will be already finished. And then think about first class. You have uh, the, the molding, the joinery, the wood covering up all the steel. You can still see where the frames are. You can still see the beams on the ceiling and the pillars you can still see all that stuff. Under that wood is the steel that Kyle's working on right now. So let me jump in to these visuals and, and just show them to you. I got I have two little slideshows. There's about 25 images, I, I think, around around that. So let's let's hop in. Of course, hold on, folks. Oh my gosh. Something happened when I restarted. Um give me one second. I'm just gonna hmm. How can I do this in the best way possible? I think I have to click on this. All right, you're just going to see some stuff. You're going to see a black screen. Um, and I'm going to add these images back in. My apologies for all of this. Um, they're literally all still sitting here. I don't know why that happened. My apologies. Where did they go? Downloads, no. Desktop. Oh boy, folks, I cannot, uh, <laughs> this is just uh, a wonderful thing to happen. Okay, this is good. I'm going to do something different. We're going to, we're going to, we are going to go off script for a second. Um, folks, I am going to, there's literally nothing else I can do here um, except no pardon me folks desktop THC that's where it should be These images that I took a million pictures of have just disappeared. I am devastated. Okay, this is fine. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Yes, Derek says this is a leaked night mode. All right, we're gonna have to just uh, move on, I suppose. Folks, I greatly apologize. Um, something that I did completely, uh, something that happened when I uh, logged on, or, or when I uh, changed everything because the, the stream was not working, made all the images disappear, um, which means these also disappeared. That's a bummer. <sighs> Okay, moving forward. Um, I will try and figure this out uh, in a minute when I bring out um, our next uh, guest, or our, our only guest for the day.
Um, uh, in fact, I uh, I may just jump to that. I think we'll we'll just bring our guest on. We'll have a little conversation about Project 401. Um, but before we do, I'll just tell you a little bit about Project 401 and where that came from. Um, so uh, THG, uh, as you know, has, uh, as I just told you and was hoping to show you, uh, was meticulously is being meticulously recreated by by Kyle and uh, and and the progress is spectacular. If you'd like to see it, just go over to our Patreon where all the images I was going to show you are currently sitting. I was just going to show you in a nice uh, in a nice uh, slideshow, but that's okay. Um, but the models that you may have always known as uh, let me get the chat back up here. Um, but the uh, but the models that you've always known as as THG, uh, what about those? Now, those will be very helpful in um, the future of Titanic, Honor and Glory. A great reference, a great uh, jumping off point. But as I mentioned, things don't line up. Um, as we've mentioned in the past, the lighting is is a pain. Um, we can't sync it. Uh, the, the models are literally unsinkable. Uh, but the, uh, the result is that um, a lot of these models were going to be unused. Uh, and so we thought... Um, why don't we give them to the fans for free, uh, basically? So uh, that became Demo 401, which grew and grew and grew. In fact, I believe between 1.4 and 2.0 uh, that is releasing today, there are 75 new spaces, I believe is what Kyle said yesterday. So uh, there's so much to see. Um, so we thought, let's give it its own, uh, let's give it its own identity. Uh, Project 401 is what we decided to call it. Um, for those of you who don't know, I, I know somebody tried to um, uh, point it out in the chat. The number 401 is uh, Titanic's uh, hull number, her yard number. Um, Olympics was 400, Titanic 401, uh, Britannic 433. Um, every ship had a number, and this was going to be our fourth demo, so um, I figured demo 401 would be appropriate, and now it's Titanic Project 401, which I, I think is a lovely title. So um, Project 401 has grown into its own thing, and now we have two wonderful Titanic projects that we're really, really excited to bring you. Um, we have uh, Project 401, which we're going to see the final demo of today, and we have THG, which I really uh, wish the files just didn't uh, disappear on me. It's an absolute bummer. Um, but uh, let's see if I click on this instead be great if this would just work but no it's not going to okay the files have completely disappeared I suppose I I suppose I may have cleaned up a little bit but I don't think I did that much it's not like I threw anything away it would still in, be in my uh, oh well um, all right folks so let's do this before we hop in to project 401 I want to bring out or demo 401 I would like to bring out um, our our special guest for the evening. Um, I got to give him a little phone call. Um, how about this, Kyle? I know you're watching. Um, <laughs> I know you're watching. Please compile like ten images that just show what you've been doing, like the finished, the nice images. Uh, and send them to me on Discord, and I will just share my screen and show the images you send me, which would at least give people an idea of how it looks. And, uh, uh, oh well, but now I'm going to give Derek a quick call um, so he can tell you a little bit. Derek is our, um, uh, he's a whole lot of stuff. Derek, hello. Hello, hello. Greetings <laughs> and salutations. How are you? I'm good. Can everybody hear me? Uh, I hope so. We're going to see in the chat in a moment. Um, at least this worked out. This little uh, visual worked out. Um, great. It sounds like people can hear you. So Derek is hey. our technical and art director as well as our uh, lead uh, eng or engine lead. Uh, I couldn't fit that all on your little card. So uh, <laughs> uh, Derek, why don't you just tell people quickly what you do with the project? Um, kind of a lot, I guess. Uh, my main role is, I would say, um, uh, engine lead or, or technical lead. And um, 
at least in Project 401, my job so far has been to do all the engine stuff. So um, in Demo 401, I, I, I did all the engine work for, for uh, uh, the earliest versions, and, and this past year I've been working on uh, 2.0 and getting it all up to snuff. And uh, yeah, here today is the day. Yeah, and uh, I know I asked you this yesterday on the patron stream, but how how are you feeling now that we are an hour and a half away from people being able to download this wonderful project? Um, surprisingly, even more nervous than yesterday. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's exciting. Uh, just an hour and a half, and um, you'll all get the chance to to explore the ship for yourselves. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Um, and another question I asked you yesterday, um, well, why don't you tell people briefly, um, between 1.4 and 2.0, we decided sort of uh, recently um, to completely, uh, we were going to, everybody was waiting for update 1.5, and it just grew so much, and it, we completely changed it. It's now 2.0. Uh, tell people what you did between the two, because to be honest, um, most of the work being done over the last year on this demo was you, um, Kyle, and Matt uh, putting together um, some new spaces, and you, com you specifically, completely revamping how they look. What were you doing this past year to uh, warrant us uh, such fanfare to call it 2.0? Yeah, so uh, the first thing we did was uh, migrated the project over to Unreal 5. Um, that's given us a lot of extra wiggle room for performance mostly, um, but it's given us some visual improvements just doing that. Um, the second thing I, I've done is basically, uh, the, the biggest problem with 1.4 uh, is just optimization of all the models uh, there's uh, everything's the whole project was kind of a mess uh, there's a, a lot of um, duplicate materials and textures and um, just the way things were were, were put together were, were just was not quite ideal from a performance standpoint so um, I went in and and I fixed a lot of that I, I drastically improved the optimization of the demo. Um, Nanite helped a lot with that in Unreal 5, so that's a feature that we're using very extensively uh, in, in 2.0. And, um, uh, and then I went through space by space and completely redid the lighting. Uh, we uh, doubled the resolution of the light maps, so that contributed to the much smoother and cleaner lighting that you see. Um, but we also just um, I, uh, I created a new workflow um, for the way that we uh, did the light maps. So in, in 1.4, essentially the entire ship was uh, light baked at once. And um, I think in total it was about, uh, to do day mode in 1.4 was about two days of light baking, like solid. Mm -hmm. um, and if I had to guess in one in 2.0, um, if I had to do it all at once, it's it solid. It'd be probably a solid month of light building, and so that that's just extra samples, extra quality that we've put into the the the, uh, the light builds, um, and then just going through and polishing like every space that we went through, we did it very methodically. I started by fixing all the light maps. And then once we did a, a light bake, you know, it was just a matter of tweaking things. And um, after the lighting was done, there was a, a, a collision pass where it went through, did all the collisions. And then uh, either individual spaces or, or small regions got, um, uh, they went to our QA team. Um, and for that, we had two teams. We had a, a beta tester team, which is actually anybody who is uh, an officer level patron uh, can uh, be part of the beta testing team. And so, and we're probably going to continue that in the future as well. So, if you're a officer, then um, we have a, a 
a uh, go check us out on on our uh, officer Discord, and um, but we also had an internal QA team uh, that did some of the newer spaces, and so about we'd spend about a week just just going through the areas, finding all the issues with it, you know, visual issues, collision issues, um, just things that seemed wrong, and then after that, go back and do another pass and and fix it. So it's just. 1.4 and well actually really 1.0 to 1.4 uh the the goal at the time was to, to to take what we had what was finished and just polish it up a bit and then throw it out the door and for 1.5 and ultimately 2.0 the kind of the the whole um motivation change you know we decided to make it it's a proper experience and it was just needed timely you know time and effort to to get it to where it is now so um that's why it took a year <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed um very cool um so one of the things i asked yesterday was what was your favorite space on the ship to do uh to to redo and and what was uh your absolute least favorite thing that you had to work on well let's start with the least favorite or at least the most difficult let's put it that way right and that is um un undoubtedly the first class smoking room um the reason for that is the the way that the stained glass behaves from a, a light baking point of view, it, it still doesn't quite behave the way that um, you would expect it to in right. real life. And so it was a real challenge to get the light in there to be balanced, sort of to get the right tone out of uh, each side of the ship and the, to get the balance between um, that uh, the light coming from the center um, around the funnel um, that um, to get the balance right where you didn't have too much light coming in from there compared to uh, you know the, the promenade windows or vice versa and and so I spent a lot of time just trying to get that uh, just perfect and uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with the result it, it it, it may get a, b a bit of a revisit for uh, Project 401, but uh, for now, I'm I'm pleased with it. Um, as for my favorite area, um, it's uh, I guess I'll I'll, I'll just I'll just uh, say this in in 1.4, uh, I believe we have uh, two of the cargo hatches uh, accessible. Right. Uh, one in the forward. Um, third class area the open uh, the open space and then there's one way near the, the back of the ship which is uh, you could sort of see down to uh, uh, about G deck or something and then up to the top in 1.4 both of these are closed um, in 2.0 um, I've actually opened up um, I believe uh, is it four or five hatches so there's um, the forward uh, hatch that opens into the forward crew area, the the where the windless gear room is, mm -hmm. and then there's the one behind that, which is the third class open area, and then we've got, uh, I, I guess it's, yeah, no, actually there's two in the in the, I mean there's two in the op uh, third class open area, and then there are two hatches at the aft end of the ship. Um, one wasn't accessible before because we, we added a new hallway at the back of the ship that you'll probably see. Um, and so they're all open now and they sort of let all this wonderful light through. And, and uh, at the forward end of the ship, it, it actually, there's a couple levels that's open. And so you can, you, you get some sunlight coming down about uh, three decks um, and it's just a, a a beautiful sight so hmm. I, I really enjoyed seeing what it was before and then you know sort of 
tweaking that and, and getting those hatches open and seeing the the, the tremendous difference um, that that made. Brilliant. Um, thank you for telling us that. Um, also, partly because it's fascinating to actually hear what you were doing all this time. Um, I've had the joy of watching you do it, um, but not everybody is here for all of that. Uh, uh, they don't get to see everything. But also, while you were talking, um, I found like six <laughs> images just to throw at you all so we can um, see how uh, Titanic Honor and Glory is looking, and then I will hop into the... Uh, I will hop into the actual um, ship itself in the demo. Um, Derek, will you be around for a while? Like, do yeah, you, um, can, will you I come can back for, uh, for... for a, uh, a Q and A in a little bit? Sure. I mean, I could stick around um, if you like, or sure. you can call me back later. I mean, sure. It doesn't How matter. How about because it'll I'm... be a little bit. Let me call you back in in a, in a minute, and uh, not a minute, but I'll I'll jump into the demo, and then I will hop out, bring you in, and we'll walk around together as well. Cool. Sounds good. All right. I'll talk to everybody soon. Then. All right. See you soon. Okay. We did this out of order, of course, but let me uh, let me hop into this. You can still hear me. Um, just got to fix up where these uh, images are. Actually, I'll just uh, get rid of this. My apologies, folks. This was so much fun to go through this in the middle of uh, the stream, but um, it will be worth it to just show you the quick little thing that I've uh, thrown together last minute, not even last minute, literally during during the stream okay here we go folks wow um you can see uh this little image i pray um this is cycling through a couple things um you are seeing uh derek's or sorry kyle's work on where thg sort of sits at the moment um, it'll cycle through these five pictures while I, I just briefly talk about it. You are seeing what resembles quite a bit what Titanic actually looked like as she was being built. Um, those boilers and engines are placeholders. Don't get too excited about those. It's really the hull that we are looking at at this moment. Um, so uh, Kyle is literally taking the original steel plans. You can see it on this first image that should pop up right here. You can see underneath the model, you can see the actual iron plans from Harlan and Wolf that Kyle is working off of. And he's constructing each plate, um, laying them down one by one. Every plate um, is actually a different shape, a different size. It's hard to copy and paste in this sort of situation um, because Titanic was such a complicated puzzle. Um, and so uh, through a lot of work, a lot of meticulous and annoying work, I'm sure, um, we have uh, this progress to show you. Those people and, and again, the, the boilers and the, and the engine room and, and the engines back there, those are all just placeholders. Those people are not actual, they're not NPCs, folks. They're as, they're as real as the people you see in an architectural concept drawing. Um, but that's uh, that's that picture right there with the frames going up the side of the ship is the l most recent um, images that we have gotten from Kyle on his end. Um, these are uh, much older. This is showing progress from, from a little ways back. That's the keel of the ship right there. The ship is upside down in this, in this shot. Um, and then um, that is, of course, the tank top, uh, our first deck uh, laid out there. Um, you can see the 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 uh, stem, uh, the stern frame in the back, and the stem in the front. Um, those uh, fake people are all standing on the tank top around where the fireman's passage would be in uh, boiler room six, the uh, on the very front there. Uh, and then of course the frames going up the side. So this is this is where Kyle is at the moment, um, really doing some incredible incredible work. Which brings me to a, a point, um, and this is partly why um, I told Derek I'd call him back, because I, I have a, a slight, uh, uh, not, not a rant, but a slight thing to go on, and then we're going to hop into the demo, okay? I promise. Um, this is my, my, last, my last little bit about this, and then we will, and then we will do the fun part. Um, so, 
if you are sitting at home, let me pull this up. Okay. So uh, an important thing. If you are at home and you're a video gamer and you're looking at those images and you're seeing the progress on Titanic Honor and Glory um, and you're not really here for Titanic, you're here for, for games uh, in general, you may be asking yourself, why are you guys doing this like this? Why are you, why are you going to such extreme lengths to recreate every plate? Just make the hull one big thing and save yourself so much time. Why are you recreating the bottom of the ship? No one's going to see that. Or is the player going to be able to swim underneath it? And of course not. But or maybe they could. I don't know. But um, you know. But why are you doing this? Why why are you going to such extremes? And the short answer is, we are not making a video game. I mean, we are. It's a it's a video game product. It, it, you explore a virtual world. It will be on Steam, you know, all, all those things. But but to call THG a video game, I think, does it a, a great disservice. It actually limits what we are actually doing. What we are actually doing is an intense study on Titanic. On it, it's a it's an incredible deconstruction of Titanic's actual construction. We are not developing this to the standards of the video game industry. We are developing this to the standards of Harlan and Wolf and Thomas Andrews, you know? And and I know that that might make some people laugh, but it is extremely true. Titanic is everything to us. Um, I, I haven't I don't think anybody on our team has gone a day of their lives without thinking about Titanic. We are all Titanic enthusiasts first, uh, first uh, video game uh, developers second. Um, we are are trying to do something for the Titanic community, um, which is admittedly a very niche community, which means that our potential for uh, incredible profits is is not uh, not in in our sights. We're not we're not doing this um, for a big payday one day. We are we are not doing this for the general video game community. We are really we are doing this for the Titanic community. We're doing this for uh, those who built her, for those who sailed aboard her, um, and uh, for all those in peril on the sea. Truly. Uh, truly, truly. So um, if you are excited by those images, if you um, uh, begin to salivate when you see uh, the potential in those images uh, to, to look at Titanic, almost like you're looking at uh, the human body in, in, in anatomy program, to be able to take the plates off, see the frames behind, to stand in a first class space and remove the, the wooden joinery to see what the lounge looks like with just steel to uh, to to just to see Titanic like you never have before. That is what we are trying to bring. Um, if you are a gamer looking for something a little more immediate, um, that's what Project Four Hundred One is for. And uh, speaking of, let's hop in. Let's take a look at Demo Four Hundred One. Finally, I've made you wait long enough. Um, let's take a look um, before. No, let's just do it. I will show you that later. You've waited long enough. All right. Um, let me get this all set up. I hope that that all made sense. Um, uh, I hope. I hope our. I, I, well, I don't hope. I know our general audience, um, our Titanic audience, our patrons. They all understand that the things that I just said. Um, they're here for those things. Um, we know it's frustrating though because yeah, eight years ago whatever when we were making those um um when we were making doing those fundraisers we you were very you were pitched a, a, a classic video game a uh a story mode 2200 npcs uh you can uh, try to survive and you can try and fall in love with bruce ismay i don't know what the you know it, it was a it was a, a full video game and um and you know those fundraisers uh, we didn't quite make the funds that were trying to be raised. Um, we turned to investors. That was, of course, impossible because the the endeavor that we were taking on to recreate Titanic and then put a video game inside it was a lot. 
Um, it still is a lot. I mean, we're still here and we're still trying. We're still pushing to make this happen. Um, so, uh, I, I, yes, the, the game, the video game that we were planning years and years ago, um, not quite in the books anymore. Um, what we are making now, um, in our opinion, is so much more than a video game. So we hope you, uh, we hope you agree. Um, so let's do it. Let's hop into uh, Project 401, um, which, uh, or Demo 401. It's so hard to get these all straight, everybody. Um, let's do it. Let me get this over here. No. <sighs> what a day. What a day. Hopefully this all is still here. Boom. We're up. Whoa. Inception. Okay, where is this game? Recycle bin, THG secrets. Here it is. Let's hop in. Now, please, uh, I, I, I hope that you will be able to um, see what's going on here. We have a notice to start off, um, which we always do. Titanic was covered in notice boards. I recommend you um, take a look. Um, read all about it. Um, if the music is too loud, don't worry. The music is only during the... Um, the menu. Um, we have a, a whole bunch of boarding points now. Um, I haven't even thought about where I want to start this. Um, so I did third class yesterday. It's so beautiful. Music by Anthony Casalena. Everybody. Okay. Let us start. Let's do it. We're gonna start with second class. Um, while it, it uh, loads in very quickly there, um, I need somebody on our team to just message me on Discord to say that everything is still working. Because once I'm in the game, I can't see anything outside of, because I don't have two monitors. That's my problem. I need two monitors like, like Jack does. Uh, our, our bestie Jack. Okay, Kyle. Kyle says he can see it. So, folks, we are in Demo 401 now. Um, I've been looking forward to showing this to you for this entire month. Um, as creative director, all the work I am doing will mostly be shown in Project 401. Um, so uh, this is one of the things I get to do. I get to show you everyone else's work. <laughs> um, so um, some of my work is in here too. Don't worry. Um, but we are uh, we, we're starting with second class. I, I just chose it out of uh, love for the second class passengers and uh, the second class spaces. Um, but we are on the enclosed promenade on C deck. Um, you will see when you hop into this for the first time, um, if you've played our previous updates, um, the, the smoothness of it. Um, everything has been uh, revamped and, and optimized by Derek to a point that it is just... It is magnificent. Um, yes, you can look in these windows now because there are rooms behind these windows. Um, I'm going to try not to run too much. I've, I've been told before I go too quickly through the ship. It's just there's so much to do. There's so much to see. So what's wrong with taking the back streets? Um, that's a reference for people my age. Okay, so we are in the second class stairs. This is the uh, aft second class stairway um mast coming through uh the decks here so um i will try to focus on uh on new spaces places that you haven't seen before um everything is just so refined and just brand new um this room for example is just completely different i believe even these tables in the middle uh weren't even there this this room had a big empty gap in the middle um, everything gets redone from the fabric on the seats to, um, the lighting of, of course, which, you know, but reflections off the, the wood, it's just, uh, there's so much that has changed, um, that's worth, uh, taking a look at. So if you were in the, uh, elevator, second class elevator, um, if you have a chance to really take this in. Um, there's so much new. Um, one cool thing uh, that we've added to this uh, demo is this lovely 
uh, map made by Kyle and Matt. I should say Matt made the map, the actual, uh, the Titanic map, and then Kyle made this version of it. I, I didn't mention that yesterday on the stream, and, and uh, uh, I saw Matt's comment after that he said it's it's his originally, which it totally is. Um, so this map shows you exactly what uh, uh, there is to see in this demo. So you can uh, you can take a look and you can zoom in with the scroll wheel. You can scroll really, really far in, but you can see one of these classic maps. Um, of course, as you can see here, explorable areas are, are that dark color, pink, visible is light. We've got level load points and skip points. Skip points are just spots where you like really jump across the ship. Um, you'll see a couple of those today. Um, level load points, uh, if you weren't aware, I'll back out so you can see some of these. If you weren't aware, the level load points, they uh, there are levels in this version. In the previous version, it was all one big level, and we had to split it up for multiple reasons. One, it makes it easier to run on your computer, of course, but um, there's a certain level of uh, reflection captures, is what they're called. It's how we get to show light bouncing off of things and things bouncing off a mirror, that sort of thing. Um, you can only have a certain amount of them. And uh, I believe the number was like 391, some random number. Um, we have well over that at this point. Um, so it would literally be impossible to put them all into one level. But my favorite thing, oh, here's a new addition. If you click the center mouse wheel button, it pops you back to the normal view. Um, if uh, Another cool thing about this, as I will I'll head, uh, let's go downstairs first. Um, as you uh, as you will see, if you have a slightly um, you know not as beefy computer as as I might, for example, um, you might you might find that second class and third class, the officers' promenade, the baths, the boiler rooms, all these levels work incredibly well. Um, the one level that gives you trouble is the first class level because it's just so big. Um, but that's uh, kind of a cool reason to have these levels is um you know you you may find that because of these levels you're able to see titanic at a much higher detail than you would have um if we made you do it all at once um this is the second class dining saloon if if you weren't aware if we have some new some newbies some new titanic fans here um second class dining saloon absolutely stunning um, coming back through to the aft stairs. Um, Lawrence Beasley's cabin is down that hall, if you weren't aware. Um, so as you come down these hallways, there's lots of um, lots of cabins. Um, none of them are open here, but you will come across doors like this, and you'll get this little prompt that says, to third class stairway. Um, this is a level load point, so you can pop through this door to the third class level. What's really cool about second class and third class is that they are entirely in their own levels so you never have to leave the second class level to see all of second class you can almost pretend you're a second class passenger and not go into other classes same with third class third class also has a couple crew spaces in it because they literally did have a couple crew spaces in their in their areas um if you notice the the font of uh two third class stairway um, is uh, very reminiscent of of a, of a font that you would see around Titanic, which are those signs um, that say first class entrance, uh, ladies, gentlemen, you know, the things that uh, uh, sort of show where the restrooms are and that sort of thing, the, the baths are. Um, we matched up the the text for the level load points to be the literal text of the signs that tell you where to go about the actual Titanic. So we are heading down. This is the uh, purser's office, second class purser's office. This, of course, goes to um, the third class, like Scotland Road area. Um, um, we have uh, more second class here. So here is our uh, uh, first example of a skip point. Um, so this hallway here, we do not have a stretch of hallway that connects this stairway to that stairway. Um, so instead of making you go up to the dining saloon and down, you can go up to this curtain and it will say, head forward. And boom, you have headed forward. You are now on the forward uh, side. The uh, steward's, uh, chief steward's cabin, I believe. 
Um, and we are now in the the first uh, the second class gangway, which this, if you remember, was the original gangway uh, for the last demo you would load into this spot. Um, okay, let's uh, continue on down. We can't velvet rope, of course, but I know we can go lower on the other side. So let's head back and head down the stairs here to the bottom of the second class accommodations. And you can take a look up at the top. Um, something I've always loved about these demos, this was in the last demo. Um, if you check the time, it is currently 5.04 in my in my current time zone um, it's one of my favorite little things that we've done and we have some other fun things planned at least I do <laughs> regarding that sort of thing so um, keep an eye out for uh, some project 401 posters laying around we'll take a look at one in a little bit so let's head all the way back up we're gonna go to what is probably my favorite space on the ship so we're at the top of the stairs heading outside for the first time oh gorgeous uh we get asked a lot if the exposure thing has changed a lot of people thought it was too bright outside or whatever we did adjust that um there's also an exposure setting in the menu that's really just if you have like a really dim monitor or a really bright monitor you can adjust it but um this is the ideal visuals uh on our end um, it absolutely looks stunning. The ocean has gotten a complete redo for um, from the last update. The black ocean that a lot of people experienced, that has also uh, been dealt with. Um, let us know if uh, it's still an issue for you. It shouldn't be. Um, but this is uh, a, another second class um, area. Um, but let's go into my favorite space. This is the second class smoke room. I just think lighting wise, it's iconic, but the interior design of this room with the, the green chairs, the gr I love the green and the wood. It's just absolutely spectacular. I, I like it far more than the first class smoke room, but it's also quite the space as well. Um, so this is, uh, and you'll also notice one of the cool things Derek has added it's a bit smoky in here. Um, you can really see it in the third class smoke room as well. Um, all right, let's keep heading through. We're on B deck. So uh, A deck is completely devoted to first class. So you actually won't have any access point to A deck on the, uh, uh, in the second class stairs. So you have to head up a little bit farther to none other than the boat deck. And head right on out all one level for second class and we got those beautiful funnels absolutely stunning work by Derek um, totally just giving the best facelift to this to this uh, to this project it is magnificent um, and funny enough, there's there's more that he's uh, he's been working on the cafe Parisienne for a separate um, thing that we can talk about in a little bit. Um, he's been working on just giving little improvements to the cafe, and he's already making it look even better somehow. So he he just has so much that he can do. Um, so uh, boat deck looks spectacular. Um, folks, let me know in the chat if there is a space that I ever miss. Um, I'm I'm going to try to get through as much of this as I can. Um, if I miss a space that you're like, no, we must see the master at arms cabin, uh, put it in the chat. And one of my trusty, um, let me just pull up my, uh, discord. So in case, uh, somebody, excuse me, somebody says anything. So there's a really cool thing that I'm going to show you. Well, let's go forward. Let's go, um, into the officer's promenade. So the officer's promenade is a little small skip point um, for uh, reasons that we will get into for Project 401. Uh, I have an idea for how we are going to deal with crew spaces, um, but you can come to this officer's promenade. But one of the cool things, um, uh, one of the cool things is you, of course, can go forward in first, into first class, which is what we're about to do. But you can also come over to this door 
and you will see uh, uh, to Scotland Road. This is a major skip point. This goes all the way down to E deck. Um, this is uh, an engineer's staircase that goes all the way down to uh, to Scotland Road. So that's a, a nice shortcut because um, we don't have the staircase, but you can uh, you can just skip down there. But let's head on through. So a big question people have had: if we have levels, what are the loading times like? The loading times are going to change depending on who you are, or like <laughs> not who you are. They'll change based on how your computer uh, how your computer runs and whatnot. I have a nice uh, setup. I'm certainly not the greatest setup in the world, but let's see this uh, loading point into second class. Or sorry, first class exterior. It's one of the larger levels in the game. Um, boom. That is the longest loading point I have ever had. And of course, it was on a stream. But, um, but yeah, it's a super um, simple thing. It's one of the bigger levels, but uh, um, we are now in first class. Compass platform. It's just I can't say enough how smooth and just refined it all is. Everything is just so much cleaner. You see so much less issues than even like my nicer end computer was major struggling. Um, if you had an issue running this before, you may it may be much better off now. Um, one of the things here's those uh, signs I was talking about. In fact, um, while they don't line up perfectly, to gymnasium, you know, same text. Um, so while uh, uh, people have asked if if there's an improvement at all with the um, with the way this runs, of course, yes. Um, there's been a, a, a drop in how, how intense it is to run these, partly because we opened up uh, or we, we leveled off some things, like the officer's uh, uh, area here is uh, its own level because we were able to open these doors now. You can pop in to the officer's quarters through here, which is so cool. Um, if you're not a big Titanic person, you have no idea why I think that's cool. Just trust me. That was really cool that I can go in that door now. Um, of course, we had down here. We've been here a lot. The uh, the wireless room looks spectacular as always, but we've seen the wireless room so much. Um, let's see some new stuff. I'm going to do a little speed down the hallway um, to the bridge. Now, the bridge is the same, but there's a lot of new stuff. Uh, there's some, there's some new uh, there's some new things around. I'll let you uh, take a look in person. Um, some props got updated. A beautiful view of the uh, forecastle deck and the forward well deck. Uh, the only two exterior spaces that you are not allowed to go to at the moment. Um, and as I said, these these officer stairs are still closed because of the way things line up. We have already been discussing potentially changing that. Um, with Project 401. Um, Demo 401 is as, uh, as finished as it's going to be. Um, but something to uh, look forward to with Project 401 is uh, the potential for a few little spaces to, to join um, our already 50% of Titanic. There's some, there's some little spaces that we have talked about adding um, for the longest time um, just for... Uh, uh, quality of life, honestly, like those crew stairs, for example, like just taking the time to fix those issues so you can go down those stairs. It's the only the, it's the only part of the boat deck that we don't have, that sort of thing. So um, let's take a really good look at all this. Oh, let's go up on the compass platform. Um, you know, the, the stairs from the boat deck down to Scotland Road, uh, I'm, we haven't talked about adding those, and I don't, I don't think we will, but that's just an example of something we might work on to just improve the uh, overall experience um, of the demo. Um, fill in these little gaps that are left uh, by some random random things. But I want to show you something that I absolutely love about this demo. Something that we opened up for exactly that reason. Sort of a quality of life thing. So the Engineer's Promenade is fun. It acts as part of the level of whatever level you just came from. Oh, you know what? In fact, sorry. Let's go through here. Um, so had I gone through to the second class, that's when second class would have loaded. But we do have the A-Deck Promenade. And in Demo 1.4, the A-Deck Promenade was not open uh, all the way. 
you could come out on it and look around, but it is now fully open. Every little thing, every deck chair, all the way to the front here. Um, to the uh, to the forecastle, all the way up here. Magnificent, gorgeous, and cool thing. Another skip point. If you come up to this door, you can go to the crew quarters, which takes you down to what is inside that door, if I am correct. Or no, maybe it's one of those doors. Those are the, That's third class, I believe. I think it's the doors on the inside. We'll find out when we go down there. Titanic uh, nuts are absolutely screaming at their computers right now. Um, okay, so I wanted to jump... Ah, there's so much to show you. All right, we'll go this way. I'm going to show you a really cool spot. Um, one of my favorite spots on the ship. Running by, running by. Beautiful water, beautiful day. Main mast. Oh, yeah, we have this fan room in here now which is pretty cool. That's the window that was on the A-deck level of the second-class stairs, which we passed. Um, very cool. And I believe, oh, there's a map. Can you find all the maps? There you go. That'll be a fun game for everybody. Let's head in here. Pretty cool. Doors open. So we're going into first class. This is the longest loading point that you will experience in this. Um, in my With my nice setup, it takes a, a good... Five seconds to, to uh, load up, but here we go, and we are into first class. Um, stunning room here. So in the previous demo, this room, uh, the previous update, this room was sort of on its own. You have to go out here, just like passengers would. The passengers would have no access to this room except for through these um, sliding doors. Um, this is one half of the uh, veranda and palm courts. Um, but now you can, as the crew could, you can come into this room and go back into the uh, pantry and bar, which has a window to the other veranda and palm court and the smoking room, first class smoking room. My favorite thing about this room, however, are the portholes up on the ceiling. Uh, that is part of the raised roof of the first class smoke room that looks out into the second class area. I just, I've seen those portholes on models that I've built and, and whatnot, and it's just, uh, it's pretty cool to be inside that room. So we are now in the first class smoke room, which was, as Derek mentioned earlier, um, uh, that uh, he mentioned earlier is uh, was one of his big headache spaces, that things just like weren't, lining up or weren't uh, working out right lighting wise but i mean i i gotta disagree with the guy um it's stunning absolutely stunning um just an iconic space the light coming through the revolving door the light coming through um my one of my favorite things of, I, I just love the design of titanic with these raised roofs like the, the portholes in the pantry um, these windows up here that actually go out to the boat deck and then these go out to a deck so there's a bit of a light difference because there's there's nothing impeding the light coming through here but that's on the the a deck level is on uh, a promenade so it's a bit more sheltered I just think that's gorgeous um, something that people bring up a lot these chairs that's not a bug that's not a, a model that's wrong those chairs just look like that I don't know what the what the idea is behind them being so short, but that's that. All right, we are now in the uh, aft stairs. So something that I should think about here is kind of blowing through first class a little bit, just sort of let you guys see first class for yourself. You've seen it quite a bit. I mean, this room has just improved so much with the, the lighting and Ugh, it's magic, absolutely magic. Um, you've seen so many of these spaces uh, already, but uh, we do have um, some new cabins in first class, and I do not want to skip out 
on those. So let's take a look at some. Um, so we added a lot of first class cabins and you can see them quite easily because light streams out into the hallway. This is cabin B81. All right. It's just gorgeous. Every, all the cabins that we added in first class are just unreal. They're so beautiful. Um, and to be able to come in here and just experience it is so, uh, so unique and so wonderful. Um, you can spend all the time in the world in these rooms. I will not spend too much time in them because we've got places to go. Oh, here's another room. In fact, these are three rooms that are combined. So this is uh, B63. Yeah, B63. This is in the modern Dutch style, if you weren't aware. Um, beautiful stained glass windows uh, just for your cabin. Like, how cool is that? Absolutely spectacular. Um, the lighting, this looks like a picture. The way that it's so great. So, so great. Um, but these rooms are all connected. Um, as you may know, these suites on B deck and C deck could be combined to be much larger suites, um, which brings us into B59, which if you've seen Matt's incredible Titanic University video about all the photos taken aboard Titanic, it's one of my favorite videos he's ever made. I've watched it so many times for research purposes, but this room is the most photographed cabin aboard Titanic. Um, specifically from like this vantage point, that bed, the four poster bed in the old Dutch style is just constantly was photographed. I mean, constantly like three times, but that was a big deal for Titanic, which did not get photographed very often. Um, so this is an absolutely spectacular space. If you played Adventure Out of Time, Titanic Adventure Out of Time, this may uh, look familiar to you because I believe the Conklings cabin was modeled like this. Um, when Beatrice came in, right, that was her name, um, you could see the four poster behind her. And then this uh, modern Dutch cabin as well, which is B57. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous room. The fact that these are all combined into one uh, is so, so cool. And then you come out this way. Um, let me make sure I got that number right. Yep, B57. And then, of course, we have had in the demo before uh, this sitting room for, I believe we've had this in the demo before. Let me know if I'm wrong. Um, B55, uh, uh, B51, B51, um, with the adjoining private promenade. Stunning. My fiance. Moving on. Um, we have the boarding entrances here. The boarding point for um, first class has been moved up here. It is no longer at the D deck entranceway. Um, making that little change. I believe there's one more cabin over here. Let me just pop in. Yep. Beautiful. This one's wild. Can you imagine sleeping in this room? I mean, I know it would have been comfortable at the time, but I would just be so uncomfortable <laughs> in a room like this. Just way too nice. Way too nice. Okay, you can take a look at all those cabins on your own time. Um, moving on, let's head downstairs to C deck to one of our new spaces. So you've seen the purser's office before, but did you know that now you can go into the purser's office? Spectacular. Here's one of those maps. Um, absolutely incredible. So if you were to look at this map, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to C deck, uh, purser's office right down here. Um, you can see things that are in the demo that you might have passed. The switchboard room, there's a pantry there that's visible. Um, the bathroom, these are all the cabins on this deck. There's a lot of cabins on C deck. 55, 97, 57, 103, 105, 120, 113, 70. Um, absolutely incredible, but the thing I think a lot of people would want to see. C73, what do you say? Let's go to C73. Um, but this space is incredible. Coming into the purser's office is just so freaking cool. Um, let's go over here. Oh, by the way, passengers are encouraged to enjoy the sea trial of Titanic Project 401. See, there's something I did. I mean, I didn't make that, but I decided what it would say. 
Um, this is a beautiful room. C70. Yeah. Uh, Jack Thayer's room. The young Jack Thayer's room. Gorgeous room. Love it. Um, but C70, so I'm on the wrong side. Let's head through here. Past these two little cabins. You can take a look at those all you'd like. Um, I'll be here all day if I show you absolutely everything that this demo has to offer. But this room right here, the infamous C73. Uh, this was, of course, your player's cabin in Titanic Adventure Out of Time, the 1996 computer game that spawned many a Titanic enthusiast, myself included. Um, I saw the movie when I was a kid, but it was this game that made everything click and made me obsessed with Titanic. And so having C-73, the real one here, it's not in the correct style. Well, sorry, C-73 in Adventure Out of Time was not in the correct style that it, it should have been. This is the correct style. This is the uh, the modern style of Harlan and Wolf's design. So it's not like Italian Renaissance or Dutch or anything like that. It's just a modern style. Um, I forget, somebody can put in the chat what the style was. I think it was like the modern Dutch or something. It was a darker wood um, style in Adventure of the Time. But we do have, um, for funsies, the, the trunk. Um, it even has some of the props in it, which is super fun. Um, well, you'll have to keep an eye out in Project 401, the final Project 401, for uh, some more fun uh, Easter eggs to Adventure of the Time because we adore Adventure of the Time at uh, Vintage Digital Revival. So let's head back this way. We've got the lovely um, first class uh, aft stairs is the bottom uh, landing. The The way that the light comes down the, the well now, it's just incredible. Well done, Derek. The Maiden Valet Saloon, here's a new space for first class passengers. We have a pantry here, which is pretty cool. So much to do, so much to see. I won't make that joke again. Um, all right, let's head on through here. Uh, we come back here, and this is the uh, the hospital area. Um, you go down here uh, to the hospital, which has been there before, but some new spaces we have. Uh, the surgery, the, the doctor's cabin. Um, his, he would sleep back here, I believe, and then uh, up here would be sort of where people could come for checkups. Surgery for Americans. Surgery on Titanic meant, uh, in the UK, that, that means like doctor's office, basically. Surgery in the United States means you're getting cut open, which uh, that is not the same thing. Uh, and we got some more cabins for some other crewmen here. Uh, the restaurant manager's cabin and the chief steward's cabin. Spectacular. And if you go through here, you go back out to the second class enclosed promenade where we began our adventure today. But we will not be doing that. Um, we are going to... Oh, God. I want to show you something that's in this room. But I'm going to leave it. Um, I'm going to let you discover it uh, on your own. Um, there's a shortcut from this room to a very cool spot. So um, you'll have to take a look. You'll have to take a look around yourself. Um, I'm not getting any major... Uh, uh, major messages through Discord. So hopefully everything is still going well. Um, stream wise um, but let's head okay we gotta go I guess we gotta go down to the dining saloon the dining saloon looks uh, better than ever it's also completely open now so you can go through this door um, and explore the entire room no uh, no chairs or or food trolleys in the way you can uh, experience the entire thing here's a famous photo right something like right feel like right here how'd I do Famous Father Brown, Francis Brown photo. Um, pretty close, I think. I think I nailed it. Um, all right. I'm going to show you one of my favorite things. So you can go down to E-Deck. Of course you can. You can always go down to E-Deck. But we're going to go somewhere else. Because we have a new way of getting around the ship that wasn't here before. So we're going to run um, down here. We're going to go down this way. We have this lovely staircase, which was here in... Uh, uh, the, the last update, but this took you straight down to the squash court and the post office. Um, let's go on down. Um, you will recall the squash court is around that way, and the post office is through this door. 
Um, but we are going to forego that for now and head through this gate, which was closed previously, um, to this first class uh, area. So you can head this way, and this would take you to third class accommodations. That's the front of Scotland Road, which we're not ready to go to just yet. Um, but you can head back this way. Um, first class cabins, first class cabins. So we have a curtain in the way. Uh, famously, in, in the new update, if you see a curtain, you can probably go through it. Head aft. Boop, boop. Here you are at the uh, bottom of the Grand Stairs um, that you know and love from previous updates. But one cool thing that we have added is down this hallway, cabin E23, <laughs> very big letters. Um, this is Molly Brown's cabin. There's a lot of back and forth about what exactly her cabin was, but I, I believe um, most have agreed that it was, in fact, this cabin. There's a great quote from her describing uh, the iceberg collision. She was reading a book at the time, and I believe she said that she was thrown to the ground or she hit her head on something. A bit dramatic, but uh, nice, simple room. I mean, a first-class cabin with bare steel on the ceiling. That's, uh, that's uh, a unique thing for us because all the rest of our suites are beautifully, you know, everything's covered and, and all that. So even someone like Molly Brown had some steel. And when we talk about THG, which Kyle has been uh, going wild on, um, you know, he's recreating every beam, every frame and, and, and whatnot. This is a perfect example of how uh, that work will appear uh, in the game. This is the steel that he's currently working on. Um, only some of it is covered by this joinery, this, these wood panels. Um, but even those wood panels are greatly determined by uh, uh, the framing. I mean, you can see this room is that many frames wide, you know, that sort of thing. So um, things will fit together much better. Um, of course, we have the squash court. Let's do that. Let's, uh, we'll show you one fun shortcut that we have added that may or may not be something you are aware of. So you come down to, um, to F deck here. And you have this hallway back here, as you always have had. This cabinet still open, um, always has been. Um, but you have uh, these doors are closed. The Turkish bath doors are closed um, because it's they they are their own level. Because first class is just such a large space. We have so much of first class, and it's so detailed and beautiful that we do have um, a couple split off points. But you could see how quick that load was. It was like a second. Um, but this is the Turkish bath cooling room. We've been here. We love it. Um, no message, no secret message uh, left by anybody for us to um, to solve. I don't believe this was open in the demo previously. Um, but one of the big changes that I asked for, I apologize to anybody who loved this. There used to be a person laying in this. Um, I, I asked. Derek, please take that out. It's just so random that we have one human being on the ship and he's laying in the electric bath. Um, that was a, a, a relic of of before uh, before my time. That uh, that J. Bruce is May NPC that uh, sadly did not get any use outside of that because it wasn't very good. Um, this is the swimming bath, of course. Funny story about this swimming bath. Um, the uh, the other day I was I was uh, just running around the the ship looking for bugs to tell Derek about and um, I couldn't find any of course um, but I did tell him hey I did find one bug there's this this weird uh, obviously it's meant to be a porthole cover but it's on the wall um, that obviously should not be there you should take it off and uh, go for a swim um, and he. He said, no, that's that's supposed to be there. I was like, no, it's not. It, there's no way that that is obviously a, a bug. Like, what is that supposed to be? And he sent me a picture. There is photo photographic evidence that there is a what looks to be a porthole cover on the wall. Um, it's kind of hard to decipher exactly what it is. So there it is. That's uh, that's what you get um, when you're trying to recreate everything exactly. Sometimes you don't know what things are, but you do it. Uh, let's go to linen storage, shall we? Um, so that was a little skip uh, point. We're in the same level as uh, as the, the baths. I mean, it's it's all one thing. You can do this all day. Um, 
output. What is this? So this is all brand new. We've got some linen storage. Um, famously, Titanic did not have laundry or um, the, a way to clean uh, sheets. So uh, they had to have uh, soiled linen storage, and they would just wash it when they got to shore, um, which is pretty fascinating. Um, more of that and more closets, lockers. Um, that's another linen storage room, I believe. Um, a new staircase that takes us back up to E deck, which takes us to Scotland Road. Let's head into third class and let's take a sip of water. Um, I think I'm going to do, uh, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll show you guys to a certain spot and then I'm going to give Derek a call and we'll have Derek join us for the the, what will be the second half of, of this exploratory experience. Um, it's 5.30 now. I plan on only going till 6, but I'm probably just going to keep playing because there's so much to do, so much to see. I can't make that joke a third time. Um, so uh, we're about 30 minutes away from the, uh, from the demo releasing. Um, so get your computers ready. So um, this is what Derek was talking about. This is one of his favorite spaces because he was able to open up the cargo hatches from above to let light stream down. Um, why would you do that? Well, partly because it looks awesome, but also because uh, in the nighttime mode, which will feature in Project 401, the um, this room would ascend, this space would look essentially the same in either because there's not a lot of light difference. Of course, there's a porthole there and there's a porthole in each hallway, but this would essentially be the same. So this gives us some variance, but also to be honest, um, if uh, on a hot day, if they needed some fresh air down below, um, they would do things like this, open up the cargo hatch and let some fresh air in. So this is just a cool way to see Titanic like you've never seen her before. And that really is kind of our mission at this point. Um, but these are the uh, uh, cargo hatches forward because if you head up this little stairway here, you are in the third class open space, which has drastically changed, of course. I mean, it's obviously looks so much better, so much more beautiful, but the light streaming down really helps this room uh, pop, if you will. Um, stunning room, absolutely beautiful room. And there's another little uh, level load point all the way over here. This door uh, goes to a crew companionway, um, which uh, we, will, we will get to. Um, I guess I could go in there now. No, I'm going to save it. Whoa, I just kind of jumped down those stairs. Exciting. So there's a cabin here. I don't, I'm not going to show it to you guys right now. Oh, wait. Jake would absolutely die if I don't show it. This is the Master at Arms cabin. Um, for some reason, we, we have a fan, uh, Jake. This is just, this is his favorite room, it seems. He talks about it all the time. So here we are could not go another minute without showing you this room here we're sitting down i'm just pressing the crouch button there's no sitting um crouch button is wonderful you need to get used to using the crouch button because there are spaces in the boiler rooms and such that you cannot access without the crouch button um, you can see down below um, you can also go down these stairs but we will not do that for the time being because we have places to go and people to see we've got uh, a boiler room here and a boiler room there. We will get to those in a moment. We're gonna we're gonna explore third class first, and then we will get to some of these crew spaces. Um, in fact, this will work out well. We explored second class. We explored enough of first class. Maybe we'll finish off with uh, the grand stairs because we didn't go all the way up to uh, the boat deck on the on the grand stairs level. Uh, but well, we will we'll finish third class. Um, that should take us to about six o'clock. I will get Derek back on the phone. And then we'll do the crew spaces, and and then we'll finish with that. Uh, uh, we'll finish at what else but honor and glory crowning time. So here is the third class dining saloon. Um, always a favorite space of ours. Um, it just looks gorgeous. Um, one thing that people may notice uh, that Derek has done, which I, I we, he and I have never talked about this, um, but you'll notice that the ship is very much lit by the sunlight coming in rooms. Like there are light bulbs, um, but you'll see that the only light bulbs that are on are often, um, you know, in the center of the space. And this goes for all classes. Um, but 
any space that's well lit by uh, daylight is not lit. Now today, in today's world, we wouldn't do this. We would light everything all the time. Um, but uh, it just, it's very um, accurate to how Titanic would be. Um, light, it would be a much darker ship than I think we would be used to. Um, lights also ran very hot. Um, so it does kind of uh, lower the temperature of rooms, especially down below where the ventilation wouldn't have been as nice. So this little emergency door, do we remember where this goes? Engineer's Promenade. So that's the door that you can head up to to get to the, um, to the boat deck. Um, let's continue on this way. Running, running, running. Um, we're going to go past this door on the left because we're a third-class passenger at the moment, and we're going to go past this door on the left because we're a third-class passenger, everybody. We can't, uh, we can't be doing all of that just yet. Um, third-class gangway entrance. This is the spawn point for third-class next to the potato room. Where else? Um, this is uh, access to the second-class forward staircase, which we have already seen. We've stood on the other side of that door, actually. Now, this space is interesting. This... Uh, this watertight door was closed in the previous demo because this um, this stretch of hallway didn't exist. Um, it's a perfect example of just how um, Titanic was uh, our Titanic was pieced together room by room, hallway by hallway. We didn't really make large pieces all at once. So these were um, two just separate areas. And the problem with this was if you were exploring our ship and you were just trying to pretend like a third you were a third class passenger and, and just exploring third class you could not get from scotland road to the third class stairway and go up to the general room and smoke room because this hallway wasn't there you had to go in this door uh to go to the second class stairs uh go up a, a level or two over and down and it, it just kind of kind of not fun. So uh, a big request that we got from fans, that we got from patrons, was put this hallway in so we can have a third-class experience, if that's what we want. And so we listened, and here we are. And you know what? I misspoke. It was actually this hallway. <laughs> After all that, this was the section that I'm talking about. So um, you could not get through to the third-class um, aft stairs in any way. Um, that's looking down to G-Deck. Um, this is one of the, uh, this is the cargo hatch number five. Um, so yes, this is the door, sorry, um, that has light coming down from cargo hatch number six. So this area is brand new with our, we have a map here. We've got a pantry that is visible from the outside here. We've got stairs heading on down to the lower levels of third class. And we have, for the first time in a THG experience, a, uh, sorry, a um, VDR experience, is uh, a third-class cabin here. I don't believe the other third class, there's two third-class cabins now. I'm trying to remember if the first one was available in the last demo. It's been so long. Um, but a third-class uh, space. I love that the, the, the walls don't even go all the way up to the ceiling. It would have been a very loud... Um, place to live i imagine um no real privacy in any way this is a pretty cool space to come all the way back here i think this is as, about as far back uh, uh, as you can go as far aft as you can go and you can really tell because of how uh drastic the bulkheads are here because we're we're right under the stern counter i believe is what it's called the under the poop deck that stern uh, overhang so we are heading up the third class stairs these two doors are accessible they go through to the second class accommodations we were literally on the other side of that door a little bit ago but we're not going to go in there right now we're going to keep heading up um, this hallway is still blocked off um, to more third class accommodations that way but we're not interested in that right now we are heading up to the uh, top of the staircase and these two rooms which we've been to quite a lot you can see a nice little smokiness to the third class smoke room. Uh, even a, a, a recently put out a cigarette or cigar. Pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, one of my all time favorite spaces. My favorite third class space for sure is the third class general room. It is the most reminiscent of uh, nomadic, um, or at least I should say nomadic spaces is 
most uh, reminiscent of the general room because uh, just the way that the, if you've been on the nomadic, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, moving on. Let's head outside, shall we? To the aft well deck. And you can see the hatches have been uncovered, so the light is coming down. Um, there's lots of debate. What color was the hatches? Were they the dark masked color uh, of the, the dado around the well deck? Were they black? Um, we are going with black at this point. Um, if you're upset by that, we can talk. Let us know. Let us know in the comments what you think the color was. That's the best way to, to deal with it. Um, yeah, absolutely gorgeous out here. Um, we were just up there earlier, if you recall. Um, but we have not been out to the poop deck yet, so let's head on out. We are 15 minutes away from the release of this experience. Demo 401, update 2.0. Off the edge here. The uh, Union Jack, the special one for Captain Smith. Um, it is not the, somebody asked the other day if, why we have the Australian flag off the back. It's not the Australian flag. Um, close, though. It's very. It looks very similar. Um, we have the docking bridge here, of course. Looks beautiful. There was a bunch of material issues back here, I remember. Like, these were always black um, because of some issue, but Derek fixed it because Derek is a master. Okay, let us, let us move on. Um, I'm going to go find... Um, let's, hmm, 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 hmm. let's take a slight detour. No, let's not. Let's stick in third class. I want to show you guys something very specific. Um, I want to talk about something really quick, and then we're going to get Derek, and we're going to start exploring the crew areas. I know you're very excited. So we're running. We're running. We're running real fast. I hope you folks are enjoying all of this. I'm having a fantastic time. All right, our first crew space we're going to go to is this room, and for a specific reason. So this is the uh, uh, engineer's mess. Um, but there is a poster on the wall that I want to show you, and I want to talk a bit about what is on the poster. And then um, sort of the, the, the beef of this stream is, is finished. Um, and then we will, we will hang out for another hour. But I just don't want people to miss some information. Um, first of all, some shout outs, um, that I want to, to make number one, our, our bestie of the month, uh, Jack, our new media manager, you may recall Jack won our, uh, screenshot competition last year. Um, and, uh, the, the screenshots that they were making were just so great. And, uh, we were like, do you want to do our screenshots? And they were like, sure. And it turns out they make incredible videos and trailers. So Jack is one of our uh, best new additions to the team. Um, all the trailers you have seen this month are uh, they're doing. Um, the initial trailer that we made for this update was very heavily worked on by myself, Jack, and Derek. Um, but all the other ones, the, the, tr the first class tours and, and the comparison video are all Jack. And he has some great stuff coming up. Um, over the next few months. So um, we're very excited to have Jack around. So thank you, Jack. Um, uh, another shout out to Andy, um, our uh, Andy Kane, our website uh, tech. Uh, he does so much more than just that. Like he's, he's a, a true uh, member of the team and he has his hand in a lot of, th you know, his opinions on this and that. And we want to get him more involved on a programming side. But um, uh, Andy, like last minute, we threw a bunch of changes to the website at him and he, he worked some magic. So if you go to our website right now, you'll see a bit of a facelift um, because we really are working on two Titanic projects now. V the, the VDR Titanic Empire, as I call it. Um, the, we have THG, which is um, that intense study of Titanic's construction that we, we discussed earlier and Project 401. Um, so now our, our website reflects that a bit more. So go take a look at the website. Um, thanks to Andy for doing that. Um, uh, a couple things uh, I wanted to uh, say. Um, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, 
Patre- uh, uh, Patreon, we're on Reddit, we're on Discord. Follow us on all that stuff um, because we, we do a bunch of different things on all those. Yes, on YouTube, if you're watching this, it's because you're a YouTube person. Um, but on Discord, we interact with fans constantly. Um, we post on Twitter a lot. We uh, I personally post on Reddit uh, as myself. So if you want to just like chat with me, go over to Reddit and we chat a lot. Um, and, uh, and then we're on Facebook still. Um, I'm personally not uh, on Facebook, so I, I won't respond to anything. Uh, but um, and then uh, Instagram, of course. Um, something else I want to talk about: we have some partnerships brewing, some fun uh, partnerships coming up um, that we can't uh, talk about right now because nothing has been signed. But um, we're really excited about them. They're not things that uh, they're just they are other companies that have really responded to the changes that we have made over the last year, especially, but really since 2020. Um, uh, they were both companies that have, have existed for a while, but um, their, uh, our, our attempt to gamify Titanic um, wasn't uh, in line with what, the, what they do, but this historic approach that we are, are now taking, that we have been taking since uh, 2020, but really the last year, with THG and Project 401, they reached out and they were like, we want to work together. That's what we do, um, just like preserving history kind of stuff. Um, and so Project 401 is going to benefit from both of them so much, um, just in in uh, everybody helping everybody. It's going to be such great symbiotic relationships that we're very excited about. I can't wait to tell you all about them. We should be able to talk about one of them next month and then one the following month. I, that's my hope. Um, so keep an eye out for new things. Um, we are doing, let me see if I can pop out of this for a second. Um, nope, to this. Hey, there I am. You can see all of my stuff. Don't look. Don't look at anything. Um, <laughs> THG Secrets. Um, I want to pull this up. We have a, a screenshot competition. I just mentioned the screenshot competition from last year. We're doing it again. Um, post your best screenshots of Update 2.0 in the 401 Media channel on our fan Discord. If you're not on Discord, please join to do this. Um, Discord is free. It's not a stressful thing. It's actually quite a lot of fun. Um, on April 1st, we will announce the developer's favorite four shots. Um, and we will take fan reactions into account. You know how you can you can like love something or laugh at something. We will take a look at those um, to see what people think. Prizes to be announced. We have some ideas for prizes. But that image behind the the text there that is actually a screenshot from um, from the game taken by Kyle. Um, uh, there are people always ask me this. There are no rules for this screenshot competition. Do whatever you want. Um, just keep in mind we will likely choose winners based on screenshots that really resemble our game so if you take it and you <laughs> you add monsters to it i don't know it, we're not going to pick that one um but definitely have some fun uh black and white stuff um do whatever you want with it um we've seen some people add some really cool things uh to our uh, images and and uh maybe you will win our screenshot competition um, we'll definitely feature all the, the winners on uh, our Facebook, our Instagram, um, and all that. Um, uh, one thing uh, I want to talk about now, now that we've talked about all this stuff, and we only have eight minutes before the um, demo uh, comes out, um, and that is Project 401. Uh, Titanic Project 401 is, this, is the project that this demo is leading us towards. This is our new logo, if you haven't seen it. This is by Luke McHugh, our amazing uh, UI UX graphics guy. Um, spectacular. I love this this logo. So uh, Titanic Project 401 will be uh, uh, is our is our uh, current focus for most of the team, for me, Derek, uh, Luke, um, and and others, while the hull of Titanic uh, gets better and better and bigger and bigger. Um, and there will be crossover. Uh, people should keep in mind uh, a thing that uh, I like to say is that THG and, and Project 401 are being developed together, um, much like Olympic and Titanic once were. And because of that, they will benefit from each other. Um, so uh, let's hop back into the game here, because I want to show you something that uh, Ratha, uh, you guys may know Ratha, uh, who does some of our um, lighting, or sorry, some, some of our community stuff. Um, on Discord and whatnot. Roth is a, a very talented 2D artist and, and 3D artist. I mean, I, the things that 
what they do is really, really incredible. So I asked if they would help me make a poster that is going to be found around the ship. And that is this poster. You may have seen me walk past it a few times. This is, of course, a recreation of a famous Titanic uh, advertisement. Um, uh, but it's all the text has been exchanged uh, for uh, Project 401 things. So you'll see here. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Uh, vintage Digital Revival, first sailing of the latest edition of the VDR Fleet, Project 401. So it will be available on Steam. Um, date to be announced, of course, that is uh, not nearly close enough to be telling you when we think it will actually be finished. But we've announced some features on Discord and conversations, but never like fully let it out. And so um, here they are. These are some things you can expect um, in Project 401. So virtual reality headset support. That is, of course, a, an absolute necessity for us. Um, we, we want you to have that virtual reality experience to walk around Titanic and be able to look up at the Grand Staircase Dome, to be able to look down um, a cargo hatch. That's uh, something we definitely want and uh, can confirm we will be um, making happen. Um, while the demo currently only has the uh, daytime setting, um, you may be used to the nighttime setting in the previous update. There is no nighttime setting in this because we are saving it for Project 401 to release alongside a sunset setting, which is something we haven't quite spoken about publicly. So there will be three times of day for you to explore Titanic in, and each one will feature their own little things. Um, like we talked about, the, the cargo hatches are opened in the daytime. They won't be open at night. Other things will be slightly different, and some of the gameplay features that I'm working on will change depending on what time of day you are uh, exploring. Um, In-game deck plans, something we need. We need to have we have a map all around the demo, as I've shown you. You can find these maps that Kyle and Matt uh, made. But uh, we want you to have that video game experience of pressing uh, a button and having your deck plans and seeing where you're standing. Um, I'm currently working on that at the moment, what those deck plans will look like, hopefully. Um, very excited about that. Uh, we will be using Matt's deck, uh, deck plans um, to sort of uh, get that going. Um, full controller support. A lot of you love to use a controller um, to explore. Makes sense. I like to do it as well. But you have to use a mouse and keyboard to get through the menu. Um, this will uh, solve that. And updated environmental sound design, something you will all find when you get into the demo. There are very little, and I say very little because I think there's only one sound effect in the entire game, which are the clocks tick, which do add quite a lot, believe it or not, when you pass a clock and it ticks in your ear as you go by. It's quite fun. But um, there are no other sounds in the game. So when you go in the engine room, it is silent. When you go on deck, there's no wind. Um, we know that that's a massive thing that's missing. Um, people want that experience, and we want you to have that experience. Um, but Project 401 will feature an entirely updated environmental sound design. You'll have the engines. You'll have wind in your hair. You'll have the engines um, rumbling underneath your feet when you stand on the poop deck. There's there's a lot of fun stuff. Um, doors opening and closing, that sort of thing. We're um, very excited to bring you that. Um, and then there are historic features. Um, not historic in the way that they've never been done before, but, you know, his, history based features, um, which are my doing. This is something I've been working on for well over a year. Um, a lot of you know I've been uh, out of the country uh, uh, traveling on a cruise ship. I'm a, I'm a performer on a cruise ship, and I spent almost my entire contract six months at sea writing these features. So you can rest assured that when you play Project 401, it was created at sea, which it should always have been. Um, these features include White Star Testimony, SS Particulars, and Queens Island Photographs. These are three features that I've just devoted my life to lately. Um, and I, uh, I'm so excited to tell you more about them. If you remember log entries from the THG Alpha, which we talked about years ago, um, they're very similar to that. They kind of grew from that. They're um, far superior versions of that, I would like to say. Um, and, you know, these may transfer over to THG. There may be other features that we think about for THG, but um, I'm just so excited to tell you about them. I will personally make a, a, a video of some sort where I, I go through each one of these and tell you all about them, um, but that is for the future. There is a fourth feature that I'm working on right now that I can't even put on this poster because it's so new. Oh, boy. Very excited for you guys to see that, if it happens. I'm, I'm, that's why it's not there, because I don't know if it's going to happen. 
Um, but I'm really hoping so. And then other additions to be announced. Um, we've talked about how um, there's a few spaces we might add here and there. So this this will grow a bit uh, larger than 50%. Um, not by much. We're not adding you know, entire sections of the ship like we did this time. Um, famous last words, though. Uh, but no, we, we've, uh, we're going to keep it small. We have a list, uh, an ongoing list. And honestly, some patrons are suggesting their desires for uh, it'd be really great if we had this hallway to connect these rooms or you could add this staircase and you could go up there um so we we do take patrons uh, uh thoughts into account and our uh, rest of our fans as well but patrons get a little extra uh, attention when they have an idea um so uh let us know what you would like to see keep it small though folks we're not going crazy this time um, we want to focus on the features and like the sound design and whatnot uh, before this game is ready to come out. There we go. It is 5.59. Wow, I nailed that. So folks, at 6 o'clock, which is uh, any second now, uh, Project or <laughs> Demo 401 will be, um, will be out and it will be in your hands. And we're going to keep exploring Titanic. I'm going to get Derek on here. And we are going to explore the last uh, areas, the crew areas. And then I, I missed a couple first class spaces as well. Um, let's see who's counting down. I've got the, I've got the time on my phone. Uh, still 5.59. Everybody's freaking out. That's what we like to see. Um, we really hope you enjoy it. Um, it's been a long time coming, especially on Derek's end, um, working long hours to make this happen. It is six o'clock. Get to it. Get downloading that file. Um, we, uh, we do have the, uh, specifications, the requirements on our website, on the demo website, double check those, make sure you have the capability to run, uh, run this. One of the things that you need is, uh, the DirectX 12. That is a requirement now. I think it always was, but people found a way to like make it happen. It is required. Um, but keep in mind, there is some ways around the requirements if uh, if you want to just explore all the smaller levels. Um, and like uh, we talked about that earlier. Um, so, uh, oh, and last thing I want to point out, this is this is really cool. So if you've seen this poster before, it looks like we took the picture of of the ship and the two spaces there. But actually, this these are two screenshots from our game taken from the same perspective as that original poster go find this poster online and compare it to this it's very cool how uh ratha and i kind of got this together and this image here <laughs> that is actually the olympic um we took our titanic and, and olympified it for a second to take this picture because in the original poster it is olympic and not titanic in that shot because that's what um white star line always used to do um just use Olympic and Titanic's place for advertisement purposes because Titanic was not finished. So um, let me go get uh, let me go get uh, Derek real quick, and we will explore these last areas. Um, here we go. Let's get Derek out. I think you guys are seeing way too much. Hey, hello. Hello, Derek. How are you? Good, how are you? Great, welcome back. Things are going a lot better since we last spoke. Yes. Um, so in terms of the download, the seems like the Wii transfer link should be working. I haven't. Yeah. Yeah, so it's the mirror link. But for some reason, even though the, the file name matches the actual button, doesn't seem to work. But Andy is... And he's uh, on it. On it. Okay. So, but anybody can start downloading. If you click the download mirror um, text underneath the button on the site, then that should get you what you need. Great. So definitely do that, everybody. Get that download started and then come back and continue watching um, the rest of this stream. So I'm uh, Derek, if you can see on the stream. Um, and if you could keep an eye on the chat as well. Um, uh, I'm in the, the turbine room, the turbine casing. Um, and also, folks, we did want to do a, a question and answer, so let's start that. Um, send in your questions, and if Derek sees something fun, uh, he can answer them or, or uh, relay a question to me if it's something I can answer. Um, but cool thing about this turbine uh, engine casing, you could not come in here before. I don't even think it was... I don't even think you could see it before. 
um, but you can not only come in, but you can also go a little ways down here to see this level, sort of the top of the room itself, and you can go up to see this level, but you can't move this this hammer, <laughs> this sledgehammer. Um, very cool, but this is the uh, casing here. Um, so, Derek, anything that you thought of while I was uh, running around? I was, I was trying to speak for you at, at points um, about uh, DirectX 12, and I don't, I, I'm the last person that should be talking about technical things as I enter the engine room. Um, yeah, well, I mean, the, uh, the, because we switched to Unreal 5, um, the, uh, there's no longer a DirectX 11 workaround because Nanite requires, um, DirectX 12. So, um, yeah, other than that, um, yeah, it seems like you've, uh, covered, uh, most areas, but, uh, I would be remiss if I, um, uh, did you skip past B53 intentionally? B53? Um, yes. did I? You went in the sitting room, but you didn't. Oh you didn't my go gosh, that's camp. right. I didn't. I forgot it was there. There's yes. so much in this demo that I forgot a major place. So we'll, we'll definitely swing by. In fact, I skipped a lot of cabins, and like the cabins are some of the coolest new additions. So we'll definitely pop yes, in there. Yeah, Kyle mentioned, um, what is it? C, C deck? Um, yeah, I quite a few. skipped a lot of C deck cabins trying to. It actually worked out timing wise. I wanted to get through a couple things before talking a bit about Project 401, which ended right at six o'clock. So um, this. Okay. Um, go ahead. And I have a quick I've got a quick update about the download. The main download button should be working now as well. Great. Um, it's possible that if you were on the site that you you may have to clear your cache. Um, so, or Classic. just try a different browser. Um, uh, also, the site itself changed this morning. So, um, if you're on the site a lot, it, it's even possible that you have the old site like still in sure. your system. Yeah, clear your cache. Um, I am. I'm gonna jump into the crew spaces now. Um, we're in Scotland Road. There's these two doors that go to Boiler Rooms five and six but we're going to get into the boiler room a really cool way um, so if you head into the stewards lavatory here um, a really nice space that uh, has been somewhat here for a while um, or maybe that was just the neck the the la uh, lavatory next door um, but you can head down this little space here to this door that says to ash place and this will take us into the boiler room level Again, like a two-second loading time. Amazing. Um, this this is an ash hoist, um, literally a hoist uh, up this uh, little funnel thing here that brings the ash up to this little area, which um, is how they kept the ash uh, on. They had ash ejectors that would eject the ash out to sea, but they had this area, I believe, in case they were in port and they couldn't eject ash. There's like there were laws, believe it or not, in 1912 um, to protect the environment in some way, I suppose. Um, but uh, you can come down to this level, and then this here, you can climb down as well. So this is one of those spaces where you do have to crouch because there's just not enough space. Um, but here we are in uh, one of the boiler rooms, I believe, boiler room six. Um, these catwalks above the boiler room were changed around quite a bit, uh, but you can you can now go up here and, and take a look uh, over the boilers. A lot of this was closed off in the previous demo. Um, Derek, I believe you did a lot of work on the boiler rooms specifically. What did you do to uh, uh, kind of improve things here? Um... Well, the first thing, I, I, what I thought you were going to ask, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute too, but um, I spent a lot of time, the, the collisions here are kind of a nightmare because um, yeah. of all the catwalks and you've got things you can bump your head against all over the place. And um, that just took a while to get the collision um, to a point where, where it works. Um, Unreal physics and collision is a little bit wonky in general. And so there's certain, certain, you know, if, if you try to break it, I'm sure you could. Um, 
but yeah, one thing one thing I did here is I redid a whole pile of textures and I added a lot of extra detail. Um, so a lot of this uh, these floors were basically clean before. Right, I remember. And um, so I have added a bunch of decals. And yeah, they looked like this because um, this this uh, stokehold I'm in right now is like closed. Like all the fires are closed, so it's sort of like they're not really working in this uh, this row. But yeah, these and so guys it's are, pretty clean, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, I also added some steam, local steam effects. Um, th the previous, uh, I guess, Demo 3 kind of had a, um, a you know, the, the whole room was full of steam. Um, right. That was kind of an issue with the coal bunkers because the steam, it's, it's a, uh, the particles don't respect walls, so... Uh, you were getting these bright glowing particles in the coal bunkers. Uh, so instead, uh, instead of just getting rid of all the steam, uh, we've placed a lot of localized effects around, um, uh, you know, different valves and things, just to just to it adds a, a cool effect to the, the boiler room. Yeah. So historically, folks, we are uh, standing in boiler room five right which is the second boiler room from the front um boiler room six would have been fully ripped open by the iceberg and flooded quite quickly boiler room five uh, had some hope for it it didn't quite uh, uh fill uh because it didn't the iceberg rip sort of uh, the damage ended right about here but you can go into this bunker where we have a little fun reference there for those in the know but this side this uh this is like right about where the iceberg damage would have stopped because the sort of the last of the damage caused water to uh, fill this uh, bunker here but i don't believe it fully made it into the boiler room proper but this room here this boiler room would have been uh, uh quite a mess quite quickly but speaking of bunkers i am gonna just show i'm not gonna go up too far um wait did i go the wrong way is it this one here you can go into this bunker it's quite dark i apologize if you can't see too much but there's a mound of coal on this side that can take you uh can take you up can take you some fun places so go exploring folks go see what you can find in the coal bunkers upstairs um, I, I just want to say uh, one thing about the download. If one of the download links is very slow, um, then that's why we added the mirror. So uh, you could try the main one. If it, it, What speed you get is going to depend. Some, pe some people will download really fast from the main download link, and some people need to use the mirror. So right. just, just try them, see what speed you get, and, and download from the fastest one. All right. Um, thank you, Derek, for the download update. So, folks, you will recall this area from the previous demo. We're heading up the fiddly trunk to the top um, to what is essentially a deck. We are on a deck right now, um, looking up this ladder to the funnel. But one new thing that we have is this little area here, which passes through the funnel casing itself, which is quite cool. You can now head all the way through to the fiddly on the other side. And what's fun about this is you get the back of the funnel, which is much more visible from here. Let's zoom in, shall we? Gorgeous. And you can even see the smoke coming out. It's magic. Absolutely magic. Um, okay. So we've seen the boiler rooms. We've seen the engine room. That's everything on the tank top. Um, now it is time to head forward to the... Uh, 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 fireman's Passage. Couldn't remember what the word was. So let's head on down. Woo! Did a little jump there. All right. Here's a staircase down. It's a bit of a maze up here, so have fun exploring that. So we're in the we're in Boiler Room 5. You can see down this way here. You can go all the way here, and you can see all the way down. Let's zoom all the way in. You can see all the way down to the back of that's boiler room uh four three two and one all the way down there pretty cool um all right running through you should never run in a boiler room but 
no one else is here, so we won't get in trouble. So this uh, watertight door is closed. Let's open it and head on through to the crew spaces forward. This is um, our, the, the, in terms of new things, this is completely brand new, the, uh, all of these spaces. Well, the Fireman's Passage was available, but everything beyond this point is uh, never before seen in Project 401. So let's head up the fireman's stairs here, which famously uh, some of the first water damage, you know, water collecting was seen at the very bottom of these stairs because um, we are heading in that uh, part of the ship. But these stairs go all the way up to G deck. Uh, sorry if you got a little dizzy there, but this is the G deck landing and this is uh, cargo hold number one, right? One, yes. Um, this is the, uh, uh, cargo hatch on the floor there. You can explore quite a bit in this room, so take a look around. Um, but we're going to keep moving. Oh, let's look up. How about the, uh, cargo hatch being open on the forecastle deck? Um, beautiful light streaming down as always. Let's get back out of here and head on up. Derek, are you seeing any good questions in the in the chat while I explore the fireman's quarters on F deck? I'm keeping an eye on it. Uh, guys, keep your questions coming. I don't, um... Pretty cool to see some crew spaces, um, sort of for the first time. I mean, we've had the stewards' um, quarters on. Um, on Scotland Road, but never anything other than that. So now we have these uh, pretty cool, I think I'm going the wrong way, this way, no, this way up, cool. One staircase was for going up, one staircase was for going down. So this okay, level, I got a, oh, a, a go question. for it. question, um, it says, uh, it's from Gamer Grenade. Uh, Hi Derek, you mentioned how Nanite helps with optimization of the demo and James touched on the limitations using reflection captures. Are there plans to use Lumen in future builds? Um, not Lumen lighting. Um, there's, uh, Pick has promised that eventually it'll be possible to use Lumen reflections uh, for, um, with static lighting. Um, I don't know how well that's gonna perform, but when that does become possible, um, we're certainly going to look at it and see if it's something that we might be able to introduce as an option because I mean reflection captures are very annoying to work with very difficult to get good quality reflections out of them and um, you know it it's depending on how well the lumen reflections perform uh, it might be possible to just eliminate the static captures at all uh, which would be really nice but um yeah we'll see we'll have to see um for folks watching which is everybody um i just explored the uh, chain locker down below the trimmers quarters here which is pretty cool to see um not a place you'd want to be if uh, the anchors were being uh, dropped but uh, uh speaking from experience uh when i lived on the cruise ship for six months my cabin was a couple feet behind uh, the chain locker on uh, the ship. Um, very rarely did we drop anchor, but there was a couple times where we did, and two times where it was dropped while I was sleeping. Um, in terms of rude awakenings, there is nothing worse uh, than the sound of a chain being let out uh, at like 6 a.m. Wow. Um, it sounds like uh, a war has broken out. Um, we're on D-deck, so we've reached the top of the fireman stairs. Um, but these stairs, of course, do go up to the main level of this uh, area, which is C-deck. So we are underneath the forecastle. The forecastle is up here. And again, not to just prove my point over and over again, but here's that steel that Kyle is you know, uh, currently constructing that's just going to revolutionize the way that uh, things like this are made um, because everything is just so dictated by... Um, by that steel. So you can go through this door here to the first class promenade. Remember when we were on A deck and there was the thing and I was trying to decide if that was the third class door or, uh, or whatnot, um, but that goes there. Um, you can head through here 
to the cruise galley. This is our first and only galley on Titanic uh, in our demo, of course. There are many others. Uh, there's the third class galley, there's the first and second class galley, um, but this is the cruise galley, which is pretty cool to see. Um, definitely explore this room. So this is one of your favorite rooms, is it not, uh, Derek? You want to yeah. tell people well, yeah. what you did here with these, and I'll try and find some good examples. So um, originally the skylight um, was up, you know, above the range, um, whatever that's called, yep. was wasn't actually open to it. I had, you know, originally the plan was to put sort of fake emissive windows in there that gave out some light, mm -hmm. um, which you wouldn't have gotten those nice sunbeams in there. And you right. certainly can't look outside through those portholes. Yeah. Now you can um, see, you can see the, uh, the crow's nest if you get and just there it is just the right spot yeah yeah and maybe <laughs> a little bit of the the uh, first funnel yeah um, but not only this i also opened up uh on the other corner of the room there's a a cowl vent that is open all the way down yeah so if you and... come over here to these like water tanks so this is the cowl vent on the forecastle deck that's just uh forward of the breakwater yeah, for, I think forward of the breakwater. Um, and uh, uh, that's the light coming down through the cowl vent. The cowl vent, that's the, the big, the, you know what they are, the classic um, vents that ships have that go up like this, like a big bell shape. Um, so that's been opened up. And then another vent uh, on the forecastle deck and the poop deck are um, called uh, bollards. They are the, the black things that, um, that the ship could tie off to. Uh, you could tie the ship to port with these big um, bollards, and they have these little screw tops that open up and let light and air down below. And so Derek opened some of those as well, and that's what these are here, which you can even see some light coming down um, through those, which is pretty freaking cool. We're big fans of, uh, of all these things. Now, the first... Uh, hatch is just uh, fully out, and you can stand up on here and take a look all around, get a nice view of some things. Gorgeous. Um, and um, yes, somebody can... is asking, um, how tall is the protagonist that you're playing supposed to be in freedom units? Um, I would, I, I believe they're right around six feet, I think. Yeah. Maybe five. 510 or something yeah, somewhere in that see, area you can see light not, coming out of not that one. super tall but also not super short that's the inside of a bollard right there if anybody ever wanted to know what that looks like and um, this is the uh, uh the mess the crew mess here um and you can see it let's see if it's not labeled here it is the seaman's mess that's right um, and yes, you can fall all the way down this hatch. I'm not going to do it right now because it would take forever to come all the way back up. Um, this is the windless space. This is a really cool, unique space that um, um, is certainly a product of a Kyle snowball. Um, I, I'm guessing uh, we really wanted this space in here, and so this gate would be closed, but you'd be able to see in here. So Kyle thought, I'll just model a quick version of the windless space so you can see it from out here. But eventually you get close enough that he thinks, well, I'll just, I'll just make it perfect, and then you can come inside. So now you can come into the windless space um, and take a look around um, the gigantic wire here that heads out to the, um, the Haas pipe in the front in the stem um, that you can get all the way out here for. Hold on, let's go. Yeah, so somebody's um, asking about... Um... Uh, what Beautiful. the player height is in in real units? Um, it's it's I believe it's 180 centimeters. Real units and freedom units. I'm glad that that's uh, what we're going with. That's funny. Um, so yeah, here is this is actually a pipe that has the chain. I don't know why I'm pointing. You can't see me pointing at my screen. Um, this pipe has the chain coming down into the chain locker below, which we were just at, and I'm trying to get by and i can't here we go this side um but yes this uh massive uh wire wheel um 
reel uh, has the uh, rope heading out, the hos- the hawser going out. My brain's starting to be fried because it's uh, it's just been such a, a, a long day. Um, lots of fun machinery here. This ladder goes up to a hatch on the um, forecastle deck, which I will show you in a second. We can't go on the forecastle deck, but I can show you um, that. One last cool thing I love about this space. You will see there is a... Uh, port there like a, for mooring lines they could send mooring lines through or drop them out or whatever and tie off to this bollard and there's one over here as well for the same purpose and directly on the other side of this uh, you can also zoom way out um, right between these two mooring ports on the other side of that bulkhead is the name titanic um, on the the bow of the ship um, you'll see when you see titanic it says titanic and then there's two holes and that's what those two holes are, which is cool to just, for the first time, be on the other side of that uh, famous uh, visual. Okay, so that leaves us with one of the coolest parts of this uh, space. Um, you can head this way. Um, this goes down, uh, we'll go down there in a second, but this looks quite promising to Crow's Nest. Um, boom, beautiful. The view from the crow's nest. We're very excited to open this up for everybody to enjoy. Um, a, just a beautiful, very unique view from way up top. Um, yeah, it doesn't get much better than this. I'm excited to see some screenshots for a screenshot competition from up here. Um, a beautiful view can't beat it so that hatch i was telling you about you've seen it a million times you probably just don't know where it went or where it came from that hatch right in the center next to that red uh, hydrant that opens and there's a ladder that goes down to the windlass space and then here's the chains that go down those pipes to the chain locker there's the bollards that those tops unscrew to let light below to um, the various spaces below so all of this um matters to the things that we've seen below which is pretty pretty cool and we got the big ship's bell it's pretty great i could stand up here forever but we've got other things to look at let's head on back down to the crew areas um so one thing you can do you can hang out right here and go down these stairs um, which will bring you to a, a dead end you can't go further down down here are the seamen's quarters um this closet i believe is for oil skins that's what my memory is telling me and we can go through this door to the third class open space which we have uh, already seen and we've been here before um, but this was that door i was telling you about to bring us through to here um, so let's do this let's go back through here we're going to head back up to first class and the quickest way to get there will be to run through here and go to this door to the first class promenade so you, we do not have the forecastle deck or the well deck uh, open, um, and the, the officer's stairs aren't open. We've talked about all the reasons why in the past, but now you can pop out here at this uh, sliding door that goes to the officer's stairs, and there's the forecastle again. There's the crow's nest. There's the cowl vent. I was right. Forward. Forward of the, the breakwater. I was losing my mind. Um, and here we are. So the only thing... We have yet to take a look at um, are some more first class spaces. We did all of second class. We did all of third. Let me know in the comments. I, and I know exactly how we're going to get into first class. Let me know in the comments. And by me, I mean Derek. Let Derek know in the comments um, what we missed. Um, if there's something in the demo that you know is there that we have not shown. Um, but we're going to head back to the second class level, to the boat deck, pop through the uh, officer's promenade, let the second class load for uh, a quick second, and then we are on to the boat deck promenade. Oh, I'm going to show you this for those of you who've been watching for this whole time. Remember when we were in the smoking room, uh, the first class smoking room, and the pantry and bar, there, was a, there were two portholes in the ceiling that I, I love. Um, those are the portholes right here. These look down into the, in fact, 
<laughs> you can kind of see it. That's crazy. I wasn't actually expecting that to even be in there, but you can kind of see some stuff in there, which is pretty cool. Um, all right. Very unique view of things from this uh, window. Never actually seen this view, which is pretty cool. Okay. So our last little secret shortcut. Um, let's take a look at the poop deck. Gorgeous. Everything. Beautiful. Derek is a magician. Um, we are going to head uh, forward. So uh, this little door here is quite fun, and it seems to be open. Let's go. Um, same level as second class. Um, you can even pop right back out to the boat deck. But this opens up this crew companion way. It's really cool spiral stairs that come down here. We're still going, we're still going. This door here is not open, but it does take you to um, the, if, in real life, it would take you to the uh, first and second class pantry galley area. Um, this is obviously for crew only, this, uh, this uh, spot, but here we are in more linen storage. Um, uh, a little fan area and more linen storage on the other side. I believe it's a drying room right. uh, for linen, yeah. Right, so we got, this is the fresh linen on this side this is the soiled linen on this side and then this is the drying room in between um, which is fairly interesting and then here is a door that leads us out to first class um, which i passed before this is the space that i was like i want to show you a really cool secret passageway um, this is the um the area i was talking about so it takes you from second class to first class through a crew companion way and here we are um we are in the space. My computer is struggling slightly to catch up, and we are there. Okay. Um, so we are on C deck at the uh, Maid and Valets, Maids and Valets Saloon. We've got the uh, barbershop, which I skipped earlier. Um, we've got some cabins this way and this way. Let's just take a look around. Most of the cabins are forward that we have available. Is this going to take me to C-73? We looked at C-70 already, so we got to go to the other side. So here's some little uh, first-class cabins here, um, sort of the uh, basic modern style of Harlan and Wolf's design. Um, these two are nearly identical cabins. Um, one of those belongs to a passenger I don't know off the top of my head, but you will have to wait for the historic features to hear all about that. Um, cabin 105 and 103. Um, I do know who had this, the, one of these two cabins. Again, you'll have to wait for the special historic features. Um, this room is iconic. We've been in this room many times. Got to stop by and take a look for um, uh, just art's sake. I mean, it's stunning. Um, this is uh, the Strauss cabin. C55, I want to say. Yes, and then, then yeah, and the, then this is their uh, adjoining bedroom, C57. The colors have changed in here a few times. Um, it has. Uh, Why don't you talk a bit about, while I look around their bathroom, about that process, about when we do change colors or textures or whatever, how we come to those, like, how that happens? Well, I don't, I, I can't. I can't answer it too much from a, a historical point of view. Right, just from your uh, point Because of view. it's kind of, you know, in, in the same way that um, others on the team probably view what I do as black magic, um, I <laughs> kind of look at the researchers sometimes and, and you know, it seems like black magic to me. Right. Um, but, um, you know, that was kind of a back and forth where um, it, we, basically we're just changing colors and... Um, they've got special uh, black and white filters that can mimic the way that um, cameras back in the back in the day worked, and so you, we just take the color images of the the, the demo and compare a couple of uh, theories, and um, you know, of course, on top of that, they've you know, there's various catalogs and, and things that say the colors but at least fr from a, an engine point of view i i usually just swap things and and tell the uh the researchers say it's 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 good and then then we stop <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh it's fun to watch the researchers 
uh, debate things and, and uh, talk through what might be here, what might be there. Um, as everybody should know, one of the things that we, we do take history quite seriously and historical things um, above all else, we do know there are some spaces in this demo that are just inherently not uh, fully accurate because some of it was made before we, you know, Scotland Road, for example, is quite um, outdated um, to what we now believe it looked like. Um, uh, it's, it's certainly not to the historical uh, obsession that uh, THG will be um, with Kyle's current work on the hull. Um, but this is pretty damn close. Yeah, um, well, we still uh, we still have to visit B fifty three if you're heading up that way. Yep, I uh, sure am. Oh, and notice everybody, passengers wishing to follow the fitting out of Titanic Project four hundred one may do so on Patreon. There you go. Um, so, what? Oh yes. So I came into the sitting room here. This is Charlotte Cardeza's sitting room with her private promenade. We looked at this already, but I didn't go in here. This is the Italian Renaissance room, I believe. Um. Somebody can correct me. I always confuse this one with B68, I think. Um, I believe it is Italian, yes. Right, Italian uh, with the satin wood interiors, which are quite wild. Um, and it's fun. Like when we look at rooms like this, somebody, like maybe a researcher, will say that wood looks a little too intense. You know, that's like really wild pattern on the wood like i don't know if anybody would actually do this on purpose um but someone else will say i don't know here's a picture of olympics cabin with the satin wood interior and you look at that picture and that is what it looks like it is a wild um a wild wood texture or you know whatever you want to call it um similarly i know a discussion just happened with the uh cafe Parisienne's carpet that it uh, like, oh, that must not be right. But then you look at a picture and no, that, it looks just like that. And it, uh, so that's how it is. Um, sort of similar to my story about the swimming bath. It's just, we're doing our best to, um, you know, make it as accurate as possible. Uh, we came down this hallway. We did those. Um, I don't know. You know what I need? I think I need Kyle's map to see if there's anything I have missed. I need to find a, a Kyle's map somewhere um, because I um, think I probably I've... the. Um, oh my gosh! You know where we haven't gone course. yet? <laughs> I haven't uh, been to the lounge or the reading and writing room. In fact, this will be a great uh, sort of finish to or everything. The palm courts. Oh no! Uh, you I did that. A starboard I, one. Yes. I did that. Um, oh yeah, I guess I didn't go through the revolving door back there, but um, people can do that. Um, there's these two cabins here. Um, which you've seen many times. This has been in, in a lot of stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, we did that. Oh, I guess we didn't go into the restaurant down here because I was kind of blowing through. I love the B-deck uh, reception for the restaurant, um, the white paneling instead of uh, instead of the uh, classic Grand Staircase paneling. It's like a, I believe it's Georgian. Um, here we are in the first-class restaurant. Um, I know... This has changed quite a lot. This is a perfect example of what I was talking about with the lighting that Titanic would have had, where um, stewards would have turned lights off in the day if they could because lights were very hot um, and not really necessary. So the lighting all the way against the walls and the windows um, provide all the light, and then in the middle you're just sort of, you know, it's lots of side lighting, which looks beautiful, but it's um, it's just very different from what we would do today, I believe. Um, I can speaking from my experience on a cruise ship, there is not a single ounce of that ship that's not perfectly lit. Um, partly because I don't know, we just we can do it, so why not? But also, I imagine if somebody trips and falls, they could sue the company for um, not no proper lighting. Um, but 1912 was a different time. So here we are in the Cafe Parisienne again. Um, we can come all the way through this door to go to the second class promenade, of course, um, but we will not do that. Yeah, um, I saw a thing about um, some people might be wondering where ray trace reflections went to. Um, the 
simple answer is that it's not supported. Uh, it's considered obsolete, um, and it, it does not work with Nanite at all. Um, so uh, we had to use Nanite for, for performance reasons, and um, that was a trade-off that uh, we had to make. Um, eventually, Lumen is going to completely replace the standard ray trace reflections in Unreal. Um, and eventually it will also support static uh, lighting. And so once that happens, we'll look at, at what might be possible to, to do with getting um, Lumen reflections into maybe uh, Project 4.1. But uh, it's at this point, it's not supported. I, so I can't even test it. I don't know how well it works. It's just not, um, um, yeah, it, there's just no choice at this point. So I'm going to, we're going to wrap this up pretty soon. Um, I'll we'll probably go into a question and answer thing after this once I can turn this off. But the last thing we're going to look at here are uh, the lounge, the reading and writing room, and uh, the top of the grand staircase. So, um, and then I think that's, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, and this room here in particular, this, the first class lounge was a pain for a lot of people. Um, because of how intense it was uh, going through the revolving door. Um, Derek can talk a bit, if he'd like, about the, the troubles with this room um, and why it was such a pain for people last time, but it is running much better um, with this new update. Yeah, it's just between, there's just a lot of uh, very, uh, a lot of unique models in this room. Yeah. And even even the uh, the chairs, used to be split into multiple parts um, rather than a single mesh and uh, I I fixed I fixed a lot of that in here by just combining meshes um, where it made sense I did a bunch of work with the textures to improve um, the usage of the textures there's various things that were duplicated and loaded twice and and that sort of thing and um, yeah, and then on top of that, it's just Nanite doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, the lounge is still a huge level. There's a lot of texture data, a lot of light map data in here, but um, uh, most of the textures and most of the light maps have been switched to Unreal's virtual texturing system, which uh, is very memory efficient. And um, it's so it, yeah, it streams, it's kind of like Nanite for textures. And uh, it it streams things in pretty well. It's so unbelievable. It, it's... Like it looks so incredible. I, I do want to point out my, I think, like this, uh, the the demo as a whole runs a lot easier on my computer when I'm not streaming and doing a phone call and having all the other things that I have running. Um, so if you see a little pop, yeah, right and I mean and... you have a you have a, a GTX 1080, which is. Um, almost 10 years old at this point like really? um, when it was released it's you know we're talking about the current generation of cards is the, is the 40 the 4000 series gotcha so you know you're that's a, that's about you know three generations of cards ago and so yeah it's um sounds like i need to get know. a little upgrade well at some point maybe yeah. <laughs> um we're in the reading and writing room now which is supposed to be the the female alternative to the smoking room. Um, one of the most uh, underused rooms on the ship um, was supposed to be cut in half. This little area turned into a uh, stateroom. Um, but it, obviously on Titanic, they didn't have the time, but they did this on Olympic. Um, but this room is stunning as well. I know it's a, it's a favorite of many uh, people on our team, uh, myself included. I do love this space. There's so many, like this, uh, the reading and writing room, the lounge, and the, in terms of first class spaces, reading and writing room, lounge, probably my favorite, two. And then second class, the smoke room is hands down my favorite. And then third class, the general room is my favorite. But we are uh, heading into the final space for today, the grand staircase the top of the grand staircase honor and glory crowning time the dome looking gorgeous as always Ooh, there was one thing i wanted to uh, uh point out about the reading and writing room yeah and that is that i re uh, fairly recently 
replace the curtains that sh had we had really awful ugly curtains that oh, yeah. blocked most of the upper windows yeah and uh oh that's they, great yeah you could so you can now uh you can now see a little bit onto boat deck yeah um, you can see the deck yeah. chairs up there which again as i said earlier in the stream is one of my favorite things about titanic is the way that the boat deck uh windows pop out on the top and now you can see much better and if you go in this room too um you can see some more up there and you can see them stacked against the wall there. That is so cool. Well done, Derek. Thank you, thank you. All right, back into, back into, uh, yeah, back into the uh, grand stairs where we will wrap this up, and I will, I will get to a little question and answer type deal. Um, but yeah, honor and glory, looking lovely as always. Um, one thing I'll point out, uh, it's a weird bug with unreal um the uh revolving doors are still statically lit but for some reason when you rotate a statically lit object rather than the lighting just being wrong it just turns black so um that's a, a bug that is with the engine that we can't fix so just in case uh yeah. um I'm, I'm sure i'm sure a lot of people will notice it because it can be pretty obvious Good call. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a there's a, a, a couple of those little things. It's just like nothing can be done. Um, so, folks, I think the last little message of this game will be notice. For all inquiries or to file a complaint with the line, please contact the ship's purser at contact at vdr.llc. Who is the ship's purser? It's me. If you email that contact email, I will answer uh, whatever issues you may have. Um, cool. Let's um, pop out of this, quit to desktop, uh, quit out of that, um, probably come back to this. Wow. Um, I guess people could probably see our, our most recent conversation. Hopefully it's uh it's You were in the reciprocating engine room, surely. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I did. Yeah. Uh, oh, my gosh. I went in. And did I just leave? Did you not go down? I don't think I did. Uh, should I, I should I, I go in Matt, or should Matt we save Kyle that for everybody? I don't think you did. Matt and Kyle don't think you did. I don't think I Everyone did either. Everyone was asking. You, you asked Dream uh, which you know what you wanted to see. Um, and I think wow. I think everyone would love to see that. Okay. It, maybe we have to do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll hop in. Um, let me know uh, if you can still see everything all, all pretty and stuff. So explore Titanic. We will explore uh, third class is closest. Um, yeah, sorry, folks. Yeah, I remember now. I, I went in. Um, I explored. I looked up at the, the light. The, the, um, we, you were talking, and we were having a conversation, so I didn't... Uh, I came in here, I went down there to those buckets, and then I came over here, and I looked up here, and we were like, oh, wow, look how beautiful that is. Wow, look um, at that. I don't think you're in the demo. No? I don't, uh, I don't see the demo on the stream. I know I'm slightly behind, probably. Oh, but... you know what? Hold on. My bad. My bad. Hold, please. Uh, boom. Okay. All right, I should be in now. Please confirm. <laughs> uh, we, yes. Great. Yes. So I came all the way up here, and I remember looking up here and thinking, you know, I think, I think you were talking, so I wasn't, like, explaining what I was doing. I was just walking around. And then I went this way, and then I went right back out. Completely forgot to come down to these levels. So the engine room is multiple levels. Um there's that top level, there's this little uh, landing here, then you can head down this way to this sort of uh, mezzanine of some sort where you can see the, the really well the tops of these engines chugging along. Um, you can't go across all of these, but you can go, you have to squat a little bit, but you can come on in here. See this, looks real nice. And this, oh my gosh, the way that it goes in and out of the light is spectacular. Um, 
but you can come all the way up here to this area. Take a look around here. Come around here to this side. If only someone didn't just leave these these crates everywhere. You could go wherever you wanted. Oh well. And come down this way. This one's quite nice. And then we will head down to the main level. Um, now on this yeah, main well, level, uh, go ahead. What, one thing that I'll point out um, is that uh, uh, and it's part of the reason why this is a fairly small explorable area is that this was never modeled to be it was never meant to be explorable to this degree it was actually actually originally just modeled to be visible from those doors believe it or not from right. at, at the at the uh, top at scotland road and um but you know i think uh, kyle um put a little more time into it um I, I mean, still, I believe he, he only spent maybe a week t or two weeks on this entire space, and it's not it's not fully accurate by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it was done kind of as a, you know, it's a little treat. It's an example of, of what's to come, and uh, in the future, these will be redone in, in uh, uh, fully accurate or as, as accurate as we can make it, so. Right. So it's a little uh, a little taste of, of the engine room, uh, even though we, we are aware that there's um, plenty missing, there's plenty out of place. Um, but it's quite cool to just see this. And in Project 401, there will, of course, be um, this updated uh, sound design. We will, we will add sounds to this room to really give it uh, uh, the environment that it deserves, because these engines are quite quite impressive um, speaking of if you are a person who uh, has any sound design experience or uh, particularly with video games and working in things like Unreal Engine le reach out to us contact at vdr.llc or use the um, uh, actually I'll, I'll go find that map and make sure I saw pretty much everything. Where's one of those maps? Uh, I know there's one aft by the stairs. Um, yeah, if, uh, if you are a sound person, if you are a programmer, um, reach out to us. We uh, could always use an extra hand in um, putting things together with this, uh, with this demo. Derek, I don't know if you want to talk for a second about what kind of... Uh, person we'd be looking for to join our team if if you happen to know off the top of your head um i i think i'd have to look up some of the exact details but sure. uh just some uh well one thing specifically is someone who is um really good at uh locomotion for first person and also vr um just uh it's something that that i can do but I'm trying to distribute my workload a bit. So, right. Um, you know, basically, uh, without revealing too much, we need a a, uh, a first-person character, but that it's not just a floating ghost. Right. So, and, uh, you know, things, we just need the general, general stuff like, you know, walking, crouching, um, but climbing ladders and, and other animations as well. So... Um, if if uh, yeah, if you've got any experience with that, reach out. We'd love to have you on the team. Well, uh, now I guess you've confirmed that ladders will be climbable. <laughs> well, we're hoping. Yeah, yeah we're I... we're really hoping because um, yeah. there's a lot of ladders out there. Um, there's a particular ladder that we've talked a lot about um, that would add a fun little shortcut. Yes, yes. I'm looking. Um, through... I see somebody in the chat, Alfie A. Uh, I'm a sound guy. Try sending a message on the website, but not sure if it worked. Send a message on Reddit. Um, if you could email us directly, yeah. if you haven't heard back, the, the the form on the website should go right to that email. So It should, but we on. have experienced issues from time to time. We don't know why, but um, sometimes a, an email won't come through or, or whatever. And honestly, I do get a lot of them also, so maybe it, it um, got lost in the shuffle. 
But uh, yes, contact at vdr.llc. Um, reach out to us and um, send us any uh, experience you may have. Um, and we will, uh, one of the things that we are looking for in, in any capacity is things that like experience, like Derek was just describing, like experience doing this, experience doing that. Um, but the team at THG, uh, at VDR, at, at 401, we are very much uh, sort of a self-starter group. Um, we uh, will not have a uh, $90,000 salary to offer to encourage you to work. It's uh, You really have to have a passion for this project um, because we do we put in, I mean, last week my my wife was out of town so i had i had nothing to do but but focus on this i probably sat at my computer from 9 a.m till two in the morning for five straight days just working on this um and you know for free <laughs> you know that like we we're just we we're mostly volunteers um so we do need people who are um, excited to dive into this and help us make something really special um because that's uh, that's all we can offer is uh, the opportunity to work on something really cool. Because that's uh, that's what we're trying to do. Um, so uh, yes, that's I, uh, that's important to for me to oh, say on yeah, mind. yeah for sure. Um, before I forget, because I've been forgetting multiple times, um, the map that James uh, was maybe just looking at or still looking at still looking. Um, that map exists in f uh, full resolution um, with the demo files. So when you extract the the demo, um, it is in the top level folder of that. Um, I believe the folder is called Guide Map, and there is a PNG that is humongous, and uh, you can use that on a second monitor or whatever to uh, use as a guide to find your way around the ship. Yeah, I explored absolutely everything. Um, I There are a couple, um, there are a few passenger cabins, which I skipped, which I will leave to you all to find. Um, but one, one thing I, I just completely missed, um, it's an entire level that I did not even go into. Um, because it is, I, I would imagine, probably the smallest level that we have. Um, maybe second smallest. So I'm going to run oh, over uh, there. Did you visit the third class saloon? Yes. Okay. Definitely did. Um, but I'm going to go visit the post office, and that will be it. Because that's the last thing that... Uh, and there's a cool way to get there that people may not know about. Um, so we're in Scotland Road right now. We're running down Scotland Road, taking a right, going back the, past the Master at Arms cabin. Oh, there's a cabin here, too, this area. So I, I do want to just briefly talk about um, people might look at, like, the post office and um, the pool and say, you know, that seems very random. Why is it separate from um, first class? And the simple answer is, is first class is as big as it can be with reflection captures, and it would not have been possible to include uh, these levels as part of the main main level. Uh, the second reason is that, at least for the post office and baggage area, it's a different class. So it's, um, y you know, it's not really, it's not a first class area. So it, right. it kind of made sense to, to split it off anyway. Um, that's what some, some of the, 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 some of the fades in, in the level um, are not actual level loads. They're they're just um, a fade to give a, a separation from classes. Um, you know, it, it's it's kind of somewhat. Uh, you know, if you're just running around and um, you you know you want to be in one class, you want to see a space. Yeah, one that... one thing that we've discussed that I'd really love to do um, in regards to that, which is something we I. I briefly suggested when we went from the uh, promenade to the engineer's promenade is it would be fun to give you all the opportunity to um, select a class restriction um, 
So uh, you you uh, choose the class that you want to load into, like third class, and then you can turn on uh, class restrictions. And then you would not be able to leave third class. You would only have third class. And I, uh, to you know, again to the average gamer, they might be like, why would you, why would you want that? Um, it's uh, it's a Titanic thing. It's you know, people want to people want to uh, experience what it would have been like. So you explore third class. And if you don't know the classes very well, um, while I do have other things in mind on how you will know what class you're in. Um, people might be exploring second class and go through a door and be like, oh, I didn't want, you know, I didn't expect that would be first class. I didn't know they were right next to each other because they are intermingled so so well. Um, so, and you could choose uh, second class or first class and just explore those areas. And you would go up to a door and it would be a crew area and you would not be allowed to go into that crew area. An example would be um, you you pick first class and you turn on class restrictions and you wouldn't be able to go into the elevator gear room or you wouldn't be able to go into the purser's office, that sort of thing, um, just to give you that uh, more authentic experience. And then, of course, you could just explore um, without the restrictions and go in all the spaces like I have been here. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, that's sort of what um, Derek's talking about here with some of these skip points being... Um, unnecessary seeming like the engineers promenade why can't you just walk into it because we're, we're trying to create some separation um for a um storytelling sort of uh vibe yeah the the other thing with the engineers promenade is that it exists on the edge of two levels right so that you just kind of a choice about which level do you put it into and so originally it was only in one side and then it was a, it was a full load into it, but um, I, I, you know, we talked about it a bit, and I like the um, the the skip down to Scotland Road. If you can take that skip without having to go through another loading screen, right? Um, so so we we just made it a fade into so you, from from second class you can fade into the engineer's promenade, and then there's a load on the other side, and it's the same thing. It's the opposite with the, the first class exterior level where you can you can fade into one side and then you load at the other side so there's that um, the last thing I wanted to mention about why the pool and the um, uh, the mail and baggage rooms are split off is uh, first first class is by far the biggest level um, and uh, after I initial did my initial um, round of optimizations it required just under eight gigs of vram and i really 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 wanted to get this demo to use less than eight gigs of vram if those rooms were included it would need more than eight gigs of vram right which means like right right now it uses less than eight gigs of vram and eight gigs of ram so a lot more people have access to to play um, if you needed more than eight gigs of VRAM, you would have needed um, either twice as much RAM, or you needed a more expensive card that had more than eight gigs of VRAM. So it was very important to, to get it under that number, and um, so more people could play it. Right. And and f first class, we did talk about possibly um, trying to 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 split it up more it's very difficult because there just aren't good split points that's that's why again why the the pool was chosen there is because it's one of the few actual opportunities where you you can carve something off of the main level to make it smaller uh which is you know it, it is if you you look at it like you, the, the grand staircase is is you can't take any level off of that because you can see if you if you look down the 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 you know the staircase you can you could see all the levels you can look up from the bottom and see every deck so you can't carve any of those out um, just where the levels are split um, is often chosen by um, uh, you know what's what's actually cut off by a solid door right um while Derek was talking, I went into the gymnasium. Um, 
played a little bit with the uh, the speed bag there. Um, and then uh, I had it outside, and the, the screenshot was gorgeous. Um, whatever the screenshot for the loading screen was just beautiful. Um, those are my favorite screenshot that I've seen. So the loading screens, they, they lo- uh, while you load in, you're shown a random image from the level that you are loading into. And my favorite screenshot I've seen so far, it's only come up a couple times, is the crow's nest one from a bit away. Derek, you were the one who took them. So, um, oh yes, you know yeah, what I'm this is about. A, sort of a, a zoomed in, yeah, eye depth of field one that that's at this crow's nest. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go see if I can recreate it or see if I can get it to trigger. Well, right there, I believe there's only three images of the crow's yeah, nest. Yeah, I figured so it wouldn't be too many. And we already it, saw it one, be... so the odds are in our favor. So I'll head down there. And then I have to go. I have where we Or we have to go because my wife just called, which means I'm taking too long. Um, and this uh, this has been quite a long stream. We're, we're already at 7 o'clock. Uh, so uh, let's head to the crew quarters. There's the chain locker. Beautiful. Um, that was quick. Head in here. Nope. Uh, where am I? Oh, I'm on the wrong side. That's why. Doop, doop, doop. Head through here. Come through here. Into this. Come on. Let's get that screenshot. No. Uh, it's okay. We'll try one more time. Um, you can see how this is a good example of the, the level loading. There it is. Look at that shot. It's so quick, but it's such a great shot. All right, I'm quitting out of this. Quit to desktop. Um, let's get back to my camera here. Um, let's go to um, screenshot competition, guys. Um, a reminder that we are doing the screenshot. Um, um, Sorry, had to text my wife real quick. Okay, so we're doing a screenshot competition. There are no rules this time. Last time I we I think we asked to just like keep the editing to a minimum. Just do whatever you want. Um, but keep in mind we will likely choose people that uh, choose images that um, have uh, that kind of capture the essence of Titanic. You know, so if you go crazy with it, we may not. Uh, uh, we may not pick it, but um, if you take a, a beautiful space, uh, you know, minimal editing so it, it looks uh, like a little bit more cool, whatever you want to do to it, um, we're excited to see what you guys can do. Um, I will check my notes. Derek, do you have any thoughts or do you have any questions in the chat? I'm going to look through and make sure I mentioned everything I wanted to mention. No, I think... Uh, I. I... I, I don't have anything on my end. Great. Um, yep, I did that. That was a disaster because the pictures all disappeared. I'm so upset about that. I had I had 25 photos that I spent all morning um, going through all of Kyle's many Patreon updates, and I picked like two from each, like my favorite two. So I could show you the progress through the, the, the months that he's been doing this, and they all disappeared. But um, but I think everybody got the, the gist of it. And many of you are following us on Patreon anyway, or you you know follow updates, and maybe you are a patron. Um, so you've already seen it. Um, okay, Project 401. It's 50% of the ship. That's wild. Um yeah, uh, I mentioned Jack, mentioned Rafa. Um, we're on all the socials. That's happening, competition. And uh, yeah, and we could really use some help with this project. If you have some pretty serious experience with um, engine stuff or sound-related things, and um, we would love to uh, get things going here. So... Um, let me check the chat real quick. See yeah, if any- one last thing oh, about gosh. if you're having trouble with the downloads, um, I just tried the main download and um, on my I've got gigabit fiber and it says it's going to take a day, um, which you know it's 
the servers are probably just being hit pretty hard right now. Um, just keep trying. The, the mirror link might work better. Uh, just just try both if, if one is seems to be really slow. Um, other other than that, um, uh, just keep trying, and, and um, it should speed up as fewer people are downloading. Um, uh, we got a question from Muso Dean. Would you create gameplay by getting licenses to do Adventure Out of Time or the movie storyline, or would you recreate memories of surviving passengers to make your own story? So um, certainly we would not try to recreate anything from the movie or from Adventure Out of Time. We love Adventure Out of Time, and we would, we'd love to reference it. But um, first of all, to, to pay for something like the movie would be massive, and they probably wouldn't let us, and... Uh, we wouldn't want to anyway. Um, if you want to see the movie, you can watch the movie. We are making our own, um, uh, likely more authentic uh, Titanic um, experience, um, as amazing as the movie is. I just saw it in 3D. Amazing. Um, but in terms of what we will be doing for our gameplay, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'll, I'll definitely do a, um, a stream or, or, or a pre-recorded video talking about all the features that I have planned but um, they're certainly more the, of the latter, recreating memories um, of the surviving and, you know, uh, and not surviving passengers because there's quite a lot of uh, documentation of things that happened to people who did not survive, um, either through other survivor uh, accounts or um, because letters from the ship were sent off at Queenstown. And um, so we have some memories from them as well. So, um, you know, one of our features is called White Star Testimony. No, uh, no real mystery of what that sort of thing might involve. It will involve the testimony of those who um, sailed aboard Titanic. Um, I've already collected uh, well over 200 of my favorite, um, uh, my my favorite uh, testimonials from passengers and crew. Um, the ones that I just think pack a real punch in terms of emotion, um, setting the scene. Um, tried to steer clear of some of the more famous ones that we've all heard before, um, but some of them could not be ignored. you got to have some of the good ones uh, as well. So, yeah, there's a lot to do for the features for Project 401, um, but uh, certainly a focus on the actual Titanic story and the stories of the actual people and not about the you know Adventure Out of Time or the movie, which we love both of those things, but we're not trying to do that. Um uh, getting some super chats. Uh, uh, Eric, Eric, I'm guessing is what that says, uh, is currently playing 2.0, and it's amazing, they said, which is great. Chris says, um, getting an error, DX12 is not supported. Um, yeah, there's no workaround for that. Um, the It just means you don't have a graphics card that supports DX12, which means it's probably over 10 years old. And there's nothing we can. There's there's no way to get around it. You just have to upgrade. Yeah, it's unfortunately uh, an unfortunate. Yeah, but um, and apparently I need to update mine as well, which is uh, you know I'll have to get on that. Um, well, okay, if Chris, if it's a new laptop, maybe your drivers aren't aren't installed. Mm. Um, it's it depends what laptop it is too. I don't. Um, it's sh- if it, if it's brand new, it definitely should have it. Um. It might be something with drivers. Uh, try. Um, I, I don't think it, there's there's prerequisites included with the demo in the engine folder, but I don't I don't think it'll make any difference there. But you can try that too. But um, I I can't. Um, yeah, I I would look at your drivers. That'd be the first yeah. thing I suggest. Um, I saw. Uh... Uh, question: well, the, uh, the demo three had the Titanic of arriving, uh, the intro of arriving at Titanic. We will not be doing that. That exterior model is being redone, uh, being rebuilt uh, for THG. So for THG, for Titanic Honor and Glory, there will be the opportunity to walk around the ship uh, as well as aboard it. But um, we, uh, Titanic Project Four Hundred One, will um, stay strictly on board. Um, uh, there was a, uh, what cabin was Lawrence Beasley's? Uh, off the top of my head, it was like D61. I forget. Um, but it was just off of the um, second class um, dining saloon, um, like right outside. Um, 
So Brian is as giddy as a schoolgirl. Awesome. Um, do you know if James Cameron has seen this project? We do know that he's aware of it, at least. Um, he has heard of it and maybe has seen some of our work, which is always fun. Um, it's always fun when, you know, major Titanic um, people uh, see some of our some of our work. It's hard to ignore. Um, our stuff is, is a lot of places. Um, uh, let's see. It runs very well. Um, um, says message Johnson. From, yeah, message from Kevin C. Holland. Will THG have a hover mode which allow the player to hover on the outside of the ship and not be grounded to only deck views? Um, in 401, no, for sure not, because the hull is is far from uh, uh, it's it's far from visually appealing, I, I'll say, from the outside. Um, but uh, in THG, maybe, um, you know, uh, James was talking about the ability to, to peel uh, layers off of rooms to see, the st you know, the steelwork behind. Um, we m It's possible we'll implement something like that for THG for the exterior. Like, maybe you can pull... Uh, you know, hull plates off or something, um, right? So yeah, the it, this is, but at this point, like we're we're still very far away from this. So these are ideals, um, and you know, it would be definitely would be cool to have some way for the player to to get special angles from it. Absolutely. Um, Uh, I was just, I'm looking at something, because someone asked a question that I'd like to answer. D56, says Brian, um, about uh, Beasley. Um, uh, let's see, Jack and Rose DLC. <laughs> no, thanks. Um, 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 is there a page yeah. that states the differences? I uh, got a little confused. Yes, I, I tried to explain a little earlier. We are, uh, we just sort of, redid um, our website we're going to further update it in the coming weeks um, to make things a little bit more clear um, our, our we have a frequently asked questions page which may answer some of your questions we need to update some of that as well um, but don't uh, uh, in in short though project 401 is this demo that we just uh, experienced with a bunch of new features it's 50 percent of the ship um, in three times of day you can explore this 50% at your leisure and take in all the history and amazing stories that Titanic has to offer. Uh, Titanic Honor and Glory is um, our flagship project, which our never ending goal is for that project to recreate 100% um, or as close to 100% as humanly possible. There are, you know, there's, there's uh, air ducts that no one can get into that, are, you know, so uh, as close to 100% as humanly possible. Um, that will have um, much more capabilities than this does. Um, so it won't be limited to like three times a day. Um, you know, you can, the things can move, the lighting will be, just things will be better. So there can be things like, uh, you know, other features that we don't even want to say out loud at the moment just because of where we are with things. Um, but um, uh, so yeah, we, we have lots of plans for things to come, but that's sort of the basics is that, um, THG is being built in such a way that way more capabilities will be able to be brought to it. But that's a much longer timeline, while Project 401 is is in terms of video game design in the home stretch. You know, there's still plenty of work to be done, but um, you see how much we have. Um, so that's, uh, but it, it is more limited in what it can do, hence like three times a day and that sort of thing. Yeah. On, on that note, somebody asked about, um, uh, I got to scroll up, but I, can't oh wait i just saw it no i didn't um they asked about the rough release month of project for one more or less um i we can't give you that no um we don't even we don't know ourselves um it's it's a while off like i i'm i'll i'll say that it's almost certain it, it's not going to be this year sure. i don't I, yeah there's um there's a lot that has to happen you know, I've, I'm just, my focus was on the demo, um, and now I'm going to pivot onto Project 401, and there's a lot of things that need to be done on top of, um, 
you know, demo 401. Visually, there's some things we want to improve, but um, it won't be, a, you know, it certainly is not going to be a drastic change in the way that 1.4 to 2.0 was. Um, but there's a lot of programming work that I got to do and uh, just all the gameplay elements that are going into Project 4.1, that's all going to take time. So um, let's, uh, you know, not this year. Um, and a lot of that will depend on if we uh, can find some uh, help to um, if, if you may you may be watching this stream at home and you may have some programming experience and um, some time on your hands to join a, a cool project and that will greatly change how long it takes because we really are just limited by what we have available to us. Um, someone asked, um, I, I just saw a comment. It's running flawlessly. Can confirm the smoothness. Those are from two different people. Um, so uh, people are people are very very happy with how nice uh, everything uh, works. Um, so uh, someone asked uh, if I would read one of the testimonials that I talked about. I've over 200 of them. Um, in fact, I have, an, I have a fun idea. I, I have, uh, I'm trying to cap it at 200. So I have a document that is just all the rejected ones um, that I don't, um, that I don't know if I will be able to find a place for them because I, I do want to try and keep it, keep it down. Um, so I have a, a rejected list um, if I can find it. It's hard to do these things when you're on uh, rejects. There we are. When you're on the on the clock here. So one of these that's like, they're all so good. Um, a lot of these are inquiries. So I've read a lot. I've read all of the inquiries basically, which is uh, stressful. Um, and uh, there's a lot of great books out there. Um, on board RMS Titanic, George Behe. It's an unbelievable place to, to start a search, for sure. Um, there's just so many great uh, quotes there. But then you read the inquiries, you read newspapers, um, uh, just looking for anything and everything you can. Um, you know. And there's, there's some that I, I even found and I, I couldn't even possibly dream of including. Um, uh, if anyone has read On a Sea of Glass and you get to the part where... The ship's really going down, and then the Carpathia and people, um, what passing ships saw floating in the water the next morning. Some of it, it doesn't get a lot of coverage because it's so sad. And um, I, I'd like to think that in the 200 that I've chosen, there's a few that kind of push that boundary a little bit. Because um, there are so many stories that we don't hear, partially because of that reason, because it's just, it's really hard to hear. Um, and we'd rather think of it as Jack and Rose's story, which is like super sad. But, but some of this stuff, when you really dive into the testimony and 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 read what was what what happened, it uh, it, it sticks with you in a in a in a weirder way. Um, and so I don't want to include all of them because we want children to be able to play this game. And um, but uh, but yeah, I uh, pretty wild. Um, so let me see if I can find a good one. Uh, here, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, okay, here's a wonderful one. This one makes me want to cry. I cry a lot when I do these things. I'm a I'm a I'm a very emotional person, and uh, uh, just reading some of this stuff just like really gets to you. But this. Uh, this is, I, I cut this, this is from May Futrell, who is a survivor. Her husband did not, uh, Jacques Futrell did not survive. He was a, uh, he was a writer. She, I, I only cut this one because I have so much from her already. Cause she's, she's a great writer herself, you know, in terms of how she describes things. No surprise that her husband was a writer and she either picked things off from him or, or they just, um, they, they became a, a couple because they just had a similar 
view of the world, but she's just a, a very well-spoken person. And so her, the things that she says are quite um, beautifully said. So I have so much from her already. And so I decided I should cut one. Um, so this one's really sweet. So this is May Futrell describing um, after, as she's being lowered in the lifeboat and seeing her husband for the last time and all the other men for the last time. She says, They knew those brave men, as my husband knew, that there was only the slightest chance in the world for them, and that this parting of which they were making so light was probably forever. Massive thing to say that these that the men that they were they were telling them will see you in the morning we'll see you when you come back get in the lifeboat uh, i'll i'll get another one or you know there's a ship coming they will arrive i'll get on the next boat don't worry we'll see each other soon all the men were saying that to their wives to get them to go into the lifeboat and the women were believing them and she either knew as they were being lowered, I forget how she describes it, or if it was the next morning, thinking back, that these men were saying these things, and they were making uh, this parting, of which they were making so light, was probably forever. And that is, oh my gosh, if I had to say goodbye to my wife for the last time and pretend like it wasn't, I would not do so well, um, clearly. So just that's just an example. Like that's, a, that's one I had to cut. And I just think I think the world of that that little quote, um, and so this this document has just so many good quotes, lots of Beasley quotes, lots of Gracie quotes, because they wrote uh, really incredible books and memoirs about it, and so so much of what I have is from them. So I, I try not, you know, you got uh, two hundred testimonials, and you find that twenty of them are from Lawrence Beasley. You got to cut some so you can get some other people's perspective in there um okay before i cry let's go back to um uh still okay chris is still getting the same error we will try and figure this out chris if we do not just you know contact at vdr.llc and we'll we'll see what we can do to figure this out um certainly if your if your laptop has direct x 12 we should yeah, and if you're on if you're on the um, uh, the Discord, uh, there'd probably be people that can help you there. Yes, uh, a little, <laughs> little bit more effectively than on stream in the chat here. Um, uh, but yeah, if you can't figure it out, um, just email us and we can see yes. what we can do. Um, I am actually the last person you should talk to about this um if you do message me and if anybody messages the contact i will reach out to people like derek um to solve problems so it really just makes it harder um so it'll be it'll be a lot so if you if you go on the discord and 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 type out your issues we can also do it that way and i can tag people and say fix this um oh um first first eldered says hopefully some daniel buckley got in and i can guarantee you i have at least one from Daniel Buckley. Let me find it. I won't read it, but I want to see it. Um, Buckley. Yeah, Daniel Buckley. Ugh. Yeah, that's a good one. There's two of them, I think. Cool. I'm really excited for you guys to, to see these because that I... Um, one of my favorite things I've ever done as a Titanic enthusiast is prep these 200 testimonials. Um, cause on this document that I'm looking at right now, I have their name, their class, um, what cabin they were in. If, if we, if we know, um, so you can go to that cabin and, and see where they stayed, but also where you will find that testimony because the testimony will be about Titanic. Um, you know, for example, that, that, uh, May Futrell quote that I just read, if it was in the game would probably be. Um, by the lifeboat that she had this realization. Um, so you can sort of experience it as close to her as possible. Um, and then all of these testimonials, uh, you will be able to, hopefully, we'll see, we gotta, we gotta work on this, but flip the card over and on the back um, will be the source of the quote. So if you wanted to read further into May Futrell's testimony, you can... Um, I believe that one is like uh, 
uh, I found that one in on board uh, RMS Titanic. But um, this Daniel Buckley quote is from uh, the Cork Constitution, uh, which is a, a, a newspaper in um, Cork, Ireland, I assume. Um, but it'll be, give you the newspaper uh, and the date, and you can search it yourself and read their whole testimony. Um, so all the, the sources will be will be there, which is important to me. So I kept track of where these all came from. So you can continue your Titanic uh, education on your own. <sighs> um, uh, let's see. Uh, let, any any other final questions? Um, Dean Cuthbert says, this uh, certainly is a massive achievement, guys. Well done. Thank you, Dean. We, we agree. Um, it, it's uh, w what we've done so far with 50% of the ship looking as beautiful as it does. Uh, again, much of that credit goes to Derek for um, just fixing everything <laughs> and making things look so great. And then, of course, Matt and Kyle for their years of work um, constructing this stuff. Um, uh, Nico, Gio, our, our uh, historic art directors, um, who uh, a massive amount of the visuals um, begin with them. Our entire team of researchers uh, who have been helping us immensely. The researchers are incredible for me as well because I can message I can message all of our researchers uh, researchers at once and say, hey, this testimony I found, um, but I, I found it in a very unreliable place. You know, like uh, I can't find the source for this. And that's why I want to do the sources. Because you'll, you know, read a book and, and wonder, oh, where did this come from? Um, and they'll say, here's seven other books that you can find it in. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, or I'll find a photo and be like, one time I literally asked the group, and I, I think I've told this story before, uh, there's a photo of Titanic, and I needed to know what day it was taken um, because uh, it was important to what I, the, the thing I was working on. Um, you know, was this April 10th? Was this April 11th? Was this April 9th? You know, I know it's in Southampton, but like what? Uh, so not 11th, but was it 8, 9, 10? And the response was like April 10th, 1.35 p.m. based on the shadows. <laughs> like amazing that they know this, you know. And I, I, I've since found that time uh, in a book. Maybe it was TTSM. But what so one of the books says specifically um, this photo was taken on this day. Judge, judging by the shadows on the picture, it must have been taken around 135. So just that is the level of detail that um, the Titanic community goes to. And I'd like to continue that and further it, you know, um, by leaving you stuff to, to research for on your own. So like the researchers are just insane. And I love I love how specific they can get about requests that I have. Um, uh, so. Uh, Derpy Possum, final question, how much alcohol has the team drank to accomplish the size of this effort? Um, I, I personally have, have ingested zero. I, I'm, I'm not much of a drinker. <laughs> um, but uh, then again, I, I spend most of my time reading and writing. Um, I don't know uh, other people on the team how they how they get through. I know we all have our we all have our other things that we do to keep ourselves sane because you know, you can't just do Titanic forever. Um, I know uh, Kyle's into um, astronomy. Um, I know um, Derek. You have your um, your business in uh, Canada. You you uh, fix and tune organs. Um, yes. Yeah. And I I have a a, a, lo a love that is not as intense as my love of titanic but it's really close because i really don't have any other interests i have two interests it's titanic and the beatles so my my love of the beatles is um you know i i it's pretty encyclopedic in a way as well where if you ask name a beatles song and i i can tell you everything about it um that i that everything i've ever heard about it just because i uh, retained all that from my my early childhood so um we all have our things to keep us sane um uh, jack uh said in the chat no alcohol but i had about uh 19 12 gallons of pepsi during the trailer shoot <laughs> yes <laughs> jack worked very hard on on the trailer we we were very meticulous about the trailer that initial trailer that we released 
um, because it was so, um, we, we just wanted it to be perfect. So we, we really put Jack through it on that one. Um, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, we got some Beatles fans. Uh, yeah, my favorite Beatles. If you guys like the Beatles, I, I'm, I, <laughs> I, I'm also a performer and I, I do, uh, Beatles shows. Um, I used to do, be, uh, live Beatles shows on my Instagram all the time. And, uh, and when I'm on the cruise ship, I'm doing Beatles shows. So, um, that's, that is my other life. My, and my favorite Beatles song is In My Life. Um, uh, yes, uh, you know my name, look up the number, of course. You know my name. It's one of the weirdest Beatles songs ever. But it's uh, my, my interesting fact about that uh, is that it's uh, Paul McCartney said it's his favorite Beatles song because it just reminds him how much dumb fun they used to have. But back to Titanic. So um, I think we should uh, wrap it up. Um, uh, scrambled eggs from No Name. <laughs> I get that reference. Um, yeah, I think we should wrap it up. We've we've talked uh, a lot about everything that we could possibly talk about. Um, uh, so excited for you all to um, play this demo and and anticipate the release of Project 401, which we're going to work just as hard as we have been working. Um, uh, moving forward, uh, we we have a lot of work ahead, but um, it's fun to to do, um, and uh, yeah, and THG will chug along as well, and we'll just keep making Titanic content. Um, can confirm um, one thing. Um, ah, no, I shouldn't confirm that. Actually, it hasn't been agreed upon. It was supposed to be agreed upon today, but I forgot. And now it's 7.30, so I can't email them till Monday. Never mind. Um, folks, it's been great. I could sit here all day and talk and talk and talk. Um, but we have uh, we have uh, a game to, to work on. So um, it has been a ple- – oh, that's been on this whole time. It's been a pleasure. I have a, a post-stream picture to show, but I, uh, I doubt it's uh, – it's there because I all my pictures disappeared. So if you see a picture uh, that appears after this that I worked on um, all morning, uh, hope that, then it'll be a, a success. So, uh, Derek, any final thoughts? Uh, no, no. Enjoy the demo. Um, take pictures. I mean, screenshots. I know that yeah. we got a competition, but um, even outside of the competition, we, we just love to see um, any of the cool things and and. We'd like to, you know, like to see your feedback. Um, helps us make things better, and and certainly there's an opportunity to improve some things uh, for Project 401, and uh, um, you know, so yeah, we'd love to hear it. Yeah. Um, all right, folks. On behalf of everybody at Vintage Digital Revival, currently hard at work on the VDR Titanic Empire. Um, my name is James Penka. This has been an absolute pleasure. We will see you all soon. Um, hope to be doing something about our um, historic features coming to Project 401. Um, yeah, get your screenshots in. Um, hopefully this picture will show up, and um, we, will, we will see you all soon. Take care. <laughs>